My friend's girlfriend's parents have like a, 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 a like a horse farm, mm -hmm. so we went there this weekend and like camp out and watch like movies horses? outside. Mm. And we were trying to <laughs> camp out and watch horses. Yeah, watch what we're just looking at. Them. I don't know. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever horse watched? <laughs> yeah, it's a great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, look at that one. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I was sleeping. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, good, good old fashioned horse watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that one just. <laughs> tough times, man. That one just, tough times. That one just. <laughs> Fine ra raise his tail and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And swatted uh, the flies uh, away from God, a shit I'm cake ass. I'm by these horses. Now, which one of these horses do you think just made the bigger pile of shit? <laughs> My money's on the brown and white one. It smells like shit out here. Yeah, yeah. Look at the wang on that one. <laughs> on this episode of the MacGuffin Guild, we're going to take part in the fight between the forces of good and evil, as well as battle utter confusion in the world of the Visitor. This 1979 spaghetti sci-fi classic directed by Giulio Paradisi, also known as Michael J. Paradise, starring Lance Henriksen, Glenn Ford, Joanne Nail, Shelley Winters, Paige Connor, and Sam Peckinpah as Dr. Sam Collins. We're going to discuss Italian sound dubbing, powerful orgy people, space carnies, attacking birds, what sort of person gifts a gun at a child's birthday party, and the horrible plot twist of the ladybug. We'll get into the music of Franco Michelizzi and his impact on modern pop culture, the longest escalator in the world, Lance Henriksen's thoughts on the film, and what came first, science or car phones? I'm Pat Doherty, and as always, I'll be joined by my fellow MacGuffins, Justin Jones and Mike Antonio. Our theme song was written and performed by Jordan Vincent. Now pay attention, avoid the birds, and try not to get too confused by the visitor. Let's get to it. I raised you better than this. Welcome to another episode of the MacGuffin Guild. I am Pat Doherty, and as always, I am here with my fellow MacGuffins. Uh, first and foremost, Mr. Justin Jones. Justin, how are you? I'm awesome. Good. Um, I switched it up. I was ready for it this time. <laughs> Yeah, pl what, what a plenty of time to think of. Yeah, you came in hot too. Yeah. Awesome, great. All right, anything? Any other thoughts? <sighs> no, nah, that's it. I'm just stoked. <laughs> I'm on <laughs> fire. <laughs> All right. Also with us, as always, the great Mike Antonio. Mike, how's it feel to be great? Pretty great. <laughs> it's <been> awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> it's not quite awesome. It's just just great. Yeah, it's great. awesome for the next level up. I don't think I'm there yet. Couple things before we get going here. I just wanted to give our social media accounts a little shout out here and some people that have been following us some new guild members i want to give them a shout out rightly so so be sure first and foremost we are on instagram which is at the mcguffin guild with mm -hmm. some underscores in there at mm -hmm. the underscore mcguffin underscore guild we are on twitter at mcguffin guild and we are on facebook you can just search us the mcguffin guild we're also on discord which justin that's your animal i'm not sure yeah that's actually the only thing i followed as you were saying is like i don't think i even follow our facebook group <laughs> so, yeah so uh, any of those uh follow us contact uh, contact us communicate with us we want to hear from you but there's a few people i want to give a shout out to on Instagram specifically, uh, we got uh, Guitarlo77, Elbow Tyler, we got Film Overlord, we got Michael Ethan277, we got Eddie Latch155, Moonbean1980, Spiderbite Boutique, and Phil Lopresti. All of those folks, thank you. Thank you for following. Thank you for supporting. We really appreciate it, and we see you. So we wanted to make sure you guys knew that. In addition to those fine folks, I have to give a special shout out to Ian's Rocks on Instagram, which is I-A-N-S underscore rocks, R-O-C-K-S. This gentleman paints phenomenal film-related artwork onto stones and rocks and the like. Really, really impressive stuff. Apparently, every now and then he does a charity event where he will auction off some of his works. Highly recommend checking him out on Instagram. Give him a follow. Us here at the MacGuffin Guild, we are definitely interested in being involved in that not only for the the charity and all that good stuff but i would love to have a piece of his work so definitely check him out and ian thank you so much for uh being a member of the guild we do appreciate it so anybody have any anybody else to add no i just that's like that's great i like i love it I, and i love that these guys are like you know some of them are 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 
active with us. Some of them are just, you know, liking our content, and it, it's really appreciated, guys. We 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 love it, and we just wanted to acknowledge that you guys are there for us. So we, we like can't express how happy we are that you guys are. Yeah. So this is all about like finding a, a good space and having fun and laughing and disconnecting from the the real world stresses. And you guys are absolutely a part of this, so we just wanted to give you a little shout out, recognize that. So, with that said, today at the MacGuffin Guild, we did the 1979, I guess it'd be an Italian cinema classic, The Visitor, correct? It is an Italian cinema here yes. we're working with. The Visitor, 1979, and uh, I guess it came out November 21st? No. You know, I don't know what month it came out. It came out in 1979. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to lay off me about that. <laughs> So anyway, the soul of a young girl with kinetic powers becomes the prize in a fight between forces of God and the devil. That's a quick little synopsis. It was August 3rd, 1979 in Italy. Ah, that would November 21st, 1980 in the United States. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Sure. So this one was directed by Michael J. Paradise, but Giulio Paradisi was well is his real name yeah he's still alive I is saw, he? yeah he's still I, alive. I was far i mean according to the internet cool oh, well, that's... i mean i haven't seen him around town or nothing we but, should yeah. get him on the show this was justin's pick and i i am excited to dig into justin's brain here because this film was to say the least very interesting i'm yeah. sure you would agree absolutely yeah it was um it was quite a ride <laughs> uh, I get uh, the original title was uh, Stridulum as well. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Strid S T R I D U L U M. Stridulum. Yes. Stridulum. Stridulum. Yeah, I'm not sure what that word would even mean. Is that an Italian word? Actually, I'd... the word stridulus means making a shrill creaking sound. Interesting. I don't. Yeah, that's weird. Man, you're yawning already. Sorry. Uh, Already, it's like it's four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Stridulous, a uh, shrill creaking sound. So that certainly makes sense if you watch the flick. Yeah, actually it does. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. It does. Yeah. Interesting. So Justin, what is your history with this film? That's exactly Please what I was going to say. Explain. Like, what, what what is your like past with this one? Yeah. What what brought it to our doorstep here? Um. So I think, if I remember correctly, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, I mean, you know how like Amazon Prime will kind of curate things for you. Oh, you watch this, so you might like sure. that. Mm -hmm. And I think that we saw the cover for this. And we're like, oh, I want to check out the trailer. And we watched the trailer, and like I was about thirty seconds in the trailer, and I was like, I need to stop whatever I'm doing and watch this fucking movie right now. Because <laughs> I was like, this, I feel like this was made for me. Mm -hmm. And then like, I I watched it, and I was like, but I, I like I can't tell you how many times I watched the trailer for something, and I'm like, man, that sucked. Mm -hmm. uh, or not sucked, but it just didn't, um, didn't grab live up, you, live up to expectations. Yeah, like I think I complained about um, Beyond the Black Rainbow before. Mm -hmm. I don't even think the yeah. movie's that bad, but like that trailer was like. I remember seeing that and my mind was just blown. I was like, I cannot wait to see this. Mm -hmm. and okay. Then, and then I felt like the trailer didn't live up. So did the trailer for The Visitor live up? I mean, did the film The Visitor live up to the trailer? For me, yeah. Okay. I think so. I didn't watch the trailer, so I can't. Oh, man. I yeah. think the trailer's... I think you could just watch the trailer and be good. I kind of... I kind of... I, I probably should have done that. I kind of <laughs> wanted to... Steer, I didn't want... I wanted to go in blind with this movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which might have not been the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> In hindsight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. think from the trailer, when you watch it, you're like, oh, this is going to be fucking batshit crazy. So I already knew going in, yeah. I was like, it's going to be wild, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was even more wild than I could have imagined. When I saw honest. that it was that o Ovidio G. Asinitis guy, or how, I have no idea how to say his name. Okay. But he also, he's like a big producer... Well, not really a big producer. He produced, like, uh, Piranha 2, The Spawning. Oh, okay. And I know how much of a weird movie that it kind of is with the flying piranha and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, like, the quality of the film and everything. I mean, freaking James Cameron directed that, but it you would not know it. It just looks like an Italian production. Yeah, I think there's a story behind that, too. Like, I'm not sure how much that... <laughs> yeah, there's more to it. did he get fired or something? Or, he may and, have. And then, but he kept his name. I don't know. But, um... Yeah. That that guy is the producer on that, so I was already familiar with his name. He's kind of notorious as 
as a producer, like the films he's produced, so I, I was already familiar with him. So when I saw his name on there, I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> now I know what I'm getting into, sort of. Not really. <laughs> yeah. A range of reviews here. Well, first off, a 78% on the tomato meter. Oh, really? God damn! 78. That's, um, that's, uh, viewer? Critics or? Critics. Okay. That's critic. Wow. Critics. And then audience score, 44%. You'd think that would be the opposite. Yeah. Honestly. So yeah, yeah. now the tomato meter at total count, I guess it's out of eighteen. So wow. it's still seventy eight percent out of eighteen for a film like this is pretty That's, pretty high. Wow, critical review. That's yeah. I'm actually pretty flabbergasted by that. To give a, a range of reviews here, David en- Enlich from film.com perhaps the most fun you can have in a movie theater without risking permanent brain damage Ooh, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I like that Alan S from the village voice says the great surprise is how consistently be damned these individual sequences fascinate that I think is a valid point the how the individual scenes and sequences fascinate yeah. yeah yes and to be honest with you I think that this film is a patchwork it's, it's like, like set pieces yeah it's like an interesting quilt with like a whole bunch of crazy visuals all sewn mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. they don't necessarily make sense together but when you watch it when you look at them individually it's like man that's a really good little design there oh that's an awesome design yeah. there and that's really well and done that's there. a uh, that's kind of par for the course for those like uh 70s and 80s Italian movies they're very um very disjointed mm-hmm. like they don't have like a uh, a very like succinct narrative flow per se mm-hmm. but it still can captivate you kind of like the you know a couple of Fulci's films yeah Lucio Fulci's films where it's just like some some points you don't even know what's going on but you can't look away mm-hmm. e- even so yeah. you know Whitney Seibold from Critically Acclaimed says, I can't say that the bulk of 1970s psychedelia was necessarily successful. They were big on histrionics, but short on actual logic. But one can at least admire them for being willing to tip into the surreal to reach something higher. Okay. So. Yes. I, I really wish I really wish I would have like had you guys watch the trailer because. Like, the trailer starts off with, like, that, the intro where it's, like, a weird kind of smoky the, cloud. The, mm-hmm. the weird sky formation. Yeah. Not that, formation, but, like, the, yeah, like you said, it, like, yeah, kind of rolls Otherworldly, like, plane yeah. scape thing. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts right from that to the basketball game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, like, a car rolling down the hill and a bunch of people running at it holding baseball bats and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. already, I was like... Yeah. And honestly... To its credit, I think I don't like movies that are just. I like weird stuff. I like really weird stuff. Oh, I don't sure. like stuff that's just weird to be weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's enough of a solid story. There like is. when you watch it, that it's like there's really a, a good foundation of a story. There's just a lot of weird stuff that can be distracting at times. Mm-hmm. But I think the more times I've watched it, I've picked up on more and more stuff. And it's like, and really, basically, I think all you need to know is like there's this this basically like a hell spawn type esque character mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. someone sent to take care of that mm-hmm. and there are other otherworldly beings and like the mortal world is kind of like the battlefield mm-hmm. on which mm-hmm. this is happening and you know there's a struggle well, of good versus yeah, evil yeah correct me of. if I'm wrong so for lack of a better term and I don't know if that they named this guy from the very beginning who literally looks like Jesus oh uh, he's yeah it is space Jesus yeah I mean yeah. it's Jesus I mean it's the Jesus in the, the isn't that um, Franco Nero Franco Nero yeah. Uncre- yeah. he was uncredited yeah yeah, yeah so for, for those who don't know Franco Nero was um uh the in the original film Django Django yeah mm-hmm. so for the sake of argument though he in essence played the role of the Jesus Space character. Jesus. Space Jesus. Let's refer to him as Space Jesus. All right. Space Jesus works. So I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Space Jesus in the very beginning, who's talking to a bunch of bald children, mm-hmm. is telling them the story of Yahweh and Zatine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's pretty, pretty we clear. We all know who Yahweh yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Yahweh and Zatine sounds like Satan to me. Yeah. 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 Close enough. So, and this little girl, what was her name? Um, oh, God, shit. I almost said Nicole, but I know that's no. right. uh, Katie? Um, Katie. It's Katie. Katie Collins. Katie. Katie. She's eight years Katie old. Katie is the... She is the last living... Well, I guess it was through the mother, but yeah. she is the... The mother is the... I think the last... Is the only one that's capable of... In that line, yeah. in his line, to carry on that, the that seed. power. Yeah, yes. the power. seed, yeah. And this Katie is the last descendant of yeah. his. Yeah, the last in line, the, basically. Yeah. So they're trying to get another child. Yeah. Before it's too late, I suppose. 
So that's ultimately, you know, once you kind of like break it down to the bare bones, here's what it is. Yeah. It Now, sure, it's convoluted and crazy <laughs> and batshit nuts yeah. at some points, but the core of it makes sense, what you're, yeah. what you're dealing with here. Yeah. I think, and to real quick... Angel was following it better than I was. She was explaining things to me, and I was like, oh. Like, yeah. I was like, man, she's really paying attention to this. Yeah. <laughs> Here's, she's in her folding clothes. That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> Here's the other bit. This film required a bit of context before you even watch it. Well, unfortunately, I got that after I watched it. Correct, but as, had, as did I. Had I had this little bit of context, the whole story, it wouldn't have been nearly as confusing now there's two things one what i just mentioned that very basic story good versus evil so you have this is a teen character who came to earth from this other worldly planet and has a lineage now going on leading down to this child and the yahweh character is coming to protect and and stop this from happening yeah he's coming to deal with the situation to deal with yeah, the situation yeah, yeah. yeah so what you know that that part makes sense the other part that as a film lover and someone who just enjoys the genre and what goes into making these films, the other aspect is the whole Italian cinema aspect, which, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, Justin, you'll, you'll know better than me, but they were known, apparently, for stealing the best nuggets from the big-budget films of that oh, day. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's very and, accurate. And just running with one them. of One of my notes is homage in yeah. quotes because and I think there's about five or six films easy that were big budget American made films that well, I say American made Hollywood you know I don't want to yeah, yeah, give yeah. all the credit to America but Hollywood for lack of a better term big budget films yeah. that you could tell this film drew from you know The Exorcist Damien and all the those Omen. stories yeah, the Omen. Sure. you could say the Close Encounters of the Third that Kind. Was, I, I, you didn't mention that. That yeah, was going. There was, was elements say. of those. Yep. Yeah, space vibe. Yeah, the whole space vibe. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, she literally got a. Well, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get. There. <laughs> I don't want to jump right to that. Yeah, there, yeah. There's the scene on the road uh, uh, in the dark where that that truck mm -hmm. drives by them, and it looks like yeah, Close totally. Encounters. You yeah, see yeah. Like, but then, the like, even when the the ramp opens up uh, and they're walking out, right? These that whole beings. that whole segment is totally yeah, for sure. Close and I feel like there's so many more that I'm not even touching on that oh, sure. were totally. Uh, oh, they, they even say Star Wars. The film opens with an Obi Wan Kenobi looking yes. character standing in a desert. Yeah. Uh, up against a, what looks like a, a Sith. <laughs> you know, like if you really look at it. If you really want to stretch, this is probably not true at all because no, because this movie came out before. I was going to say uh, Highlander because mm. <laughs> they're at a sporting event. Oh, yeah. Beginning. Yeah. Oh, speaking of the sporting event, uh, and I, you know, I'm not done yet going through. Uh, I got to rattle off some negative reviews, but before I go there, I could have swore. That when I was watching the movie, that I rolled over and like hit the remote or something and, and put you're on watching ESPN. Else, yeah. I'm like going on. I'm like this scene. This is this a real best like a replay it, on like it, it ESPN Classic going. or something? Yeah. I thought it was. I thought I changed the channel. Yep. I think it was building the tension though. Yeah. I think, but certainly by the end of it, I totally got what they were doing. Although yeah. that, the re, uh, the re, uh, the reporter was annoying as shit. Yeah. Oh, that where, does where does the money come from? Where does the money come from? He was like hounding him. Yeah. Which, by the way, that's Lance Henriksen that we're talking yes. about. Yes. Yeah. Lance Henriksen. Not the reporter. The yeah. That guy was like, like for a report. I know reporters dig deep, but it's mm. like you know. Mm. But I mean, in hindsight, now that I'm thinking about it, I guess it makes sense. Oh, it's it's setting like yeah. It's it's the viewer like it's letting you know that this guy has endless money and yeah. that people want to know where it's coming from. Yeah. All right. Give some uh, negatives here. Tom Meek from Cambridge Day says the special effects are quite chintzy. Mm. Sam Peckinpah casts barely a shadow of humanity. And then there's the teeming flock of birds. This is cheese whiz that barely cuts it as a cult staple. Hmm. Uh, we okay, got dude. Fernando Back off. Truba yeah. from El Paes, Spain. Wow, didn't we have him? Yeah, yeah we had an El Paes. This guy has a lot of opinions about Wait, shit. is it the same guy? It might be. What was the name again? Fernando Tr Truba? No, I think the name's different, okay. but the but the yeah. city or location is the same. In The Visitor, logic and common sense are scarce, and no one believes anything. I even uh, I don't uh, think it's as I don't think it's as illogical as people say it is. Like it's, it's just the presentation is yeah. is jarring. Like I've points. seen 
types of movies like this mm -hmm. where it's like I have no clue. There's like zero context where I feel like here you just maybe have to look for it. If you more. really follow, like if you pay attention, you can follow yeah. this movie. Yeah. This looks like a Hulkwin album cover, which yeah. is great. Yeah. <laughs> which actually, that joke was made. That's funny. Uh, we watched an episode of um, Mystery Science Theory. 3000 this weekend mm -hmm. and they made uh, I forget what movie it was they made a reference that something looked like a Hawkwind album cover okay. which you kind of did but I swear that looks like um, Wes Warrior on the Edge of Time almost so Sean Axemaker from SeanAxe.com says The Visitor is not the first exorcist knockoff to come out of the Italian genre factory it may however be the least coherent I don't think it's an exorcist knockoff I don't knock think it off, is though. either it, it, it does borrow an element mm -hmm. of that but man, it's it's so much not that yeah. I would say. Yeah, it's not like it's not like a girl who's possessed. Yeah, it's a girl who's. It's, I would say it's closer to the omen than it is. Uh, yes, the exorcist. I would say that's a stronger. Yeah, because it's this link, this child, this evil child born. But even that is. Yeah, but he's just pure evil. Where she's just kind of like a fucking smart mouth brat, <laughs> kind of. Which I think she's great in it. I think she played. Yeah, part she great. did play. She played it really well, almost unnervingly well. Yeah. yeah. I want to know where she got that southern accent, though. Yeah. She might be from the south. I but mean, I'm saying, but I'm saying with the mother, not oh, having not accent. having it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know where... The, where does this take place? Atlanta. It's yeah. Atlanta. Oh, well, yeah. okay. And apparently that actress still lives in Atlanta. I think she owns some kind of either makeup or hair... Care basketball team. She inherited yeah, from her. Team. That father. <laughs> her, her and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. partnered yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but she did look very similar I to Linda Blair. There were times when she spoke, like her mannerisms and the, her way of speech sometimes. I was like, wow, that's very, very reminiscent. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I don't know. Was it intentional or is that just... I, I feel like it was. Yeah. I mean, again... Or did they just kinda... cast her because she kind of does speak that way? Yeah. But then again, she was a good actress. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I thought she was mm -hmm. awesome. One final review and then we'll move on is uh, Dorothy Wooden from The T, British Columbia. The Visitor is a terrible film. Okay. <laughs> Simply what it says. Already. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. Well, well I appreciate your opinion. This is <laughs> speaking of someone we were talking about uh, earlier, and and I'm not the only one that thought this because I actually read up and people said that mm -hmm. this is, it does kind of look like this is like Holy Mountain. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, this like, has a look of it very yeah. well. Yeah. No, it's funny. I laugh every time I watch this because I work with a guy. So we're, we're watching the, be the beginning of the uh, film right now. Yeah, we have it playing in the background as we're discussing. I work with a guy, and every time I see um, Franco Nero's face here, mm -hmm. I think of the guy I walk, work with. Not that the guy doesn't have long hair like I like he has like short, you know, short, mm -hmm. short brown hair, but like just his face looks like exactly like this really? guy I work with. It's like hilarious every time I That's see funny. it. I've got to tell him to watch this. He'll be like, I ain't watch that stupid movie. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody to watch this unless they're the right type of person. Oh, man, I tell everybody. I don't even give. I have no shame. <laughs> yeah. So spaghetti sci-fi would be, I guess, how you would summarize this okay. flick. Sure. Which, it was, it, me going in not knowing anything, I was like, is the whole movie going to be, like, this opening part? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know it was going to cut to being, yeah. you know, modern, modern day, day yeah. Earth. Yeah. Can we go back to that last review? I want to touch on a point she made. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly I can. Just wanna, I don't want to dissect the entire thing, but I just want to... So, yeah, so Dorothy Wooden from The T, British Columbia. That's the one. The Visitor is a terrible film. Okay. I disagree. Ex ex expound upon <laughs> that. Exp expound upon Fair. that. Let me, let me see if I can open the full review. I wonder if she said specifically what, like, what triggered her about it. Let's see. I'm, I'm opening it. Look, man, Italian cinema of the 70s and 80s is not for everyone. No, it's, it's just, not. Just not. All right, it's so genre. The sub okay, The Visitor or The Joy of Truly Awful Films. Okay. And we then she says, it. are you a lover of irresistibly inept cinema? Here's a genre classic. Okay, well, maybe I'll and watch a movie that she directed. January 24... <laughs> see how well she did. January 2014. Oh, really? So this is... Wow, so she had time... She probably right. had time to so this think is how, about that. This one. is how it opens. Holy shitballs might be the first thing that comes to mind after viewing a uh, viewing of The Visitor. Holy because the film is about an intergalactic showdown between the forces of good and evil featuring a Jedi like John Huston... A cross-eyed Christ figure with a curious resemblance to Lemmy from Motorhead. And, and a crew of Lemmy. bald tykes in matching gold turtlenecks. 
And shit balls because there's no getting around it. The Visitor is a terrible film. A cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, banana split insanity, sprinkled with nuts and drizzled with awful sauce. That's okay because more importantly, it's a lot of fun to watch. Certainly, it doesn't make one ounce of sense. And maybe that is just what one needs at the moment. The world seems a bit more crazy than usual. In the so past this is few turning weeks, into a positive review. Yeah. Let's see. I'll go down a little more. I was going to say, that's where it gets its charm, but yeah. then it then it kind of did take a positive turn. And here's the thing, though. Like, I have this discussion with a friend of mine a lot, like, about what's a good film. Like, we'll watch a movie. It's subjective. Like, mm. well, not only that, though. Like, we watch Street Trash, which is one of my favorite movies I love of all movie. time. Yeah. And uh, we watched it. We watched it, and he, like, laughed his ass off. We were both laughing. Mm. We had a great time watching it. Mm. And I was like, oh, did you like it? He's like, yeah, I wouldn't call it a good movie. I'm like... You just sat there and enjoyed it the entire time, laughed, had a great time, and now we're talking about it. Yeah. So what specifically makes a movie good and bad? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you could sit there and get endless entertainment out of it, like, or Listen. or you could watch some overproduced Oscar-winning movie that, like, two years from now, people are going, why the yeah. fuck do we like that movie? Yeah, listen, that I, I'm glad you say that. I remember, for some reason, this always stuck with me. I went to the theater. Mike, you may have gone with me. I don't remember. Uh, I went to the theater when Eight-Legged Freaks came out. I did not see that in the theater. Um, but I love that movie. Yeah. So listen, it's fun. It is fun. I, I still like it. I, I had saw it re- not recently, but so last much years. fun, so much fun in the theater watching that movie. Like I, it was a true like it brought me back to what it must have felt like in the early days of cinema, where theaters just became a thing. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. like throwing popcorn in the air, and there's these giant spiders. Well, it was like you know it's watching a them back to that kind of film. Yeah, absolutely. And. I left there thinking that was a fun film and forever ingrained in me was the fact that that movie was fun. Yeah. Like, and because that experience was so much better than the production value or the acting or the, you know. Sure. It is about the, a lot of times it is about the experience itself. Mm -hmm. And, and also, you know, as you said, like seeing it with an audience can change your perception of a movie too. Like you seeing it that way made you enjoy it that much more. But if you saw it sitting at home, you might have been like, "Oh, that was," you know. You might still enjoy it, but yeah. you wouldn't be that as enthusiastic. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, Justin, let me read this. This is at the end of the review here, just to kind of wrap this up. So maybe it's a little unfair that they plucked that one sentence. Yeah. At the end, it's the Icarus-like quality of the visitor that hits home. Its mad ambition to fly towards the sun ultimately inspires an odd form of respect. It's god-awful and barking mad, but at least it's trying in its own crazy way to do something. At least I think it's trying. Attacking pigeons, flying hair, and pong get in the way. (laughs) Don't... So don't miss it at the cinema in Vancouver this week. Take your friends and maybe some other things because it's definitely a trip that should be shared. She's talking about weed. Yeah. But anyway, so she so, t- she turned it around. So she's she's admitting that like... All right, I, I take back all those bad things I said about her in my head. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's great. Well, here's one more negative review. Uh, Lance Hendrickson said it was a turkey. Did he? Uh, yeah. Did he say he that? Does not, he's not a fan of this oh, movie. Oh, really? Uh, it's just crazy. I, I think it's fun. And he's great in it. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, that's part of the appeal, too, because when it was going through the cast, like, it's all people I'd seen before. Man, this cast is like... Yeah. But I'm not real familiar with a lot of the works. Like, Glenn Ford, the only thing I... Like, I know he's been in a million Superman. movies, but Superman's the only thing yeah. I can think of that yeah. I've seen him in. Yeah. Me, too. Same same here. But I instantly recognized him. I was like, oh, shit. So yeah, yeah. Uncle, Uncle Ben? And I, think no, he, Uncle ben. I, mean, I think he's really good. No, he's uh, Pa Kent. Pa Kent, Uncle Ben. That's fucking Uncle ben, Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I was thinking it was the rice. Isn't that... Well, it is Uncle rice, yeah, yeah. but... Hmm. Yeah. But we're talking about comic book characters, Pat. Yeah, so Lance, Lance Hendrickson. My expertise. Yeah. Uh, lengthy basketball scene. Yeah, we touched oh, on yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did write something down here for this part. Oh, yeah, isn't Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just put subtle hoop explosion... <laughs> Because, yeah, what it, what the f- uh, Yeah, the the funny thing I think about what, this part is What happened? There's it because the girl like was it was a distraction to keep oh, her father's or her okay. stepfather's team with, to keep them in power or whatever, okay, I guess. Okay, okay. But like it's this whole build up and like he looks at her, they make eye contact, and there's just sweat coming down his head and it's this big build up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like it shows the clock ticking down and he's running up and it's like, "All right, what's he going to do? Is he going to shank it or whatever?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like how do you stay off the radar? How do you be as inconspicuous as possible? Is he going to, like, you know, bang it off the rail? Is he going to, like, take a... Th- a f- uh, yeah, see? She's using the power yeah, on Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he going to, like, you know, is he going to take a, a three-point shot and he's just going to total, like, miss or whatever? What's mm-hmm. going to happen? 
no, no, I can the- hoop's gonna explode. Yeah. Like, and what people are going like, there's a fucking exploding hoop, uh, exploding hoop. Something, <sighs> some, that's gonna some, be investigated. Something's yeah. up here. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think they would just be like, oh, game over. The, the hoop exploded. Yeah, yeah. They might be like, yo, timeout. Stop the clock exactly where it was. We got to redo that play yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. I think they cut out the scene where all the fans are leaving or high five and yo, man, did you but see you that know hoop explosion? <laughs> that was crazy. It was an Italian director, so maybe they're not uh, as. Uh, up to speed on how basketball works. They, they might not know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I thought he was going to like drop dead or something. Yeah, or, something. or just yeah, fall yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, like fall, like, like break his ankle sl- yeah, or something. Because it shows earlier. I think it shows him rubbing his leg or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or one of the other blade player. Somebody, player. Somebody, somebody's rubbing her leg. Yeah, was it that was, a cool J? I think it was. Yeah, even, the Kangle. Even yeah. the shot. Or no, the uh, not the Kangle. The uh, what do you call it? I know what you're talking. The fuzzy hat. Yeah, or something. I know. Like here, it's like, is he gonna slip? Is he gonna slide? Yeah, he looks like he's about to slip. Oh no, he jumps. Oh, boom. (laughs) Not suspicious at all. Sparks. And then he hangs in the air. Yeah. For a long period of time. Yeah, it's strange, but uh, it's Italian cinema. That's what they do. Well, here we are talking about it. Yeah. Left an impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Present. (laughs) Here. So watching, I'm guessing, well, uh, sure, how, how frequently would you say you've watched this movie then in the time since you first saw it? I've probably only seen it three or four times, probably. Okay. And so every time, like, your your opinions on it are rock solid at this point? Um, Yeah, I think I feel pretty much ballpark the same way about it each time. Because, mm. like, I know when I'm in the mood to watch it, yeah. I already know what I'm like, this is what I'm in. Because it's very rare that I'll just, like... And actually, that's why I picked it the other day, because I was like, I'm in the mood to watch this. I'll just pick it. You know oh, what I mean? okay. Okay. So, so it's not like I just, like, someone comes over and we happen to be talking about Lance Hendrickson. And we're like, oh, you should watch this. You'll yeah. really enjoy this. Mm. And they're like, what the fuck did you just do to me? Yeah. Oh, you like, like The Wild Bunch by Sam Peckinpah? You yeah. should check out this movie. Yeah, yeah. You like Straw Dog? <laughs> yeah. How would you describe the mood? Like, what vibe does this movie give you? It's just like, I don't know. It's just fun and goofy and just mm. wild and just... I don't know. I don't watch it as like I don't sit there and like usually t- even though I have notes here. I don't usually take notes. Oh wow, it's really cool. Like mm. I don't watch it for like I don't know. I just like the music. I like the big the big music and mm, stuff. Because yeah. even like in the in the trailer when the bi- when the big music comes up and stuff, it's like whoa man. It's like so over the top mm-hmm. and like kind of in your face. And I th- and it's like non apologetic about it either. It's like yeah, we got this giant pong machine here. <laughs> yeah. So all right, let's yeah. talk about the music. Who did the music? Franco Michelizzi. Hmm. The one and only. Are you familiar with him? Nope. No. Do you have any... Did you look into him? No. I didn't at all. No. I did not. I didn't minimal. I started... I, I'd never heard his name. Listen, so. this yeah. is where I really learned something. Oh, good, good. So, his music, first of all, the minute I saw it, every time the old man... What's the old man's name? Is that... Obi-Wan? Go by, yeah, Obi-Wan. Does he go by Yahweh? <laughs> no, what's, no. He goes by... Um, uh, he has a name. Yeah, what's uh, his name? Okay, hold on. Is it O-S-C-A-R? <laughs> God. No, it's... Um, it's weird. It's like... Kids won't get that. Uh, Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, that's I was going to say Hershey. Yeah, Jersey. All right. So, every time Jersey enters the scene, there's this... Very, yeah. yeah. I mean, how would you describe that? Very big, yeah, hefty, lofty, yeah. (laughs) And it was awesome. And the the minute I heard it, you know what I thought of? Hmm? Star Wars. No, not even close. Jurassic Park. No, Batman Returns. No, (laughs) Jesus Christ. Give us a clue. clue. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, he okay. uses that f- that music cue. Oh, okay. In a lot of his Does films. He? Yeah. In fact, you will uh, probably How be... How did I not pick up on that? I'm surprised. You will be... In- think no. about Kill Bill. Like, you know, one of them walks into a scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's that, you know, it's that old school 70s, yeah. big, you know. So, but listen... I did write down worst Polish accent ever. So here's what happened. Oh, to, I think he's. I did. Cody, I think he's supposed to be from Poland. Have you ever been to the United States? Before? Oh like, yeah. Never. <laughs> With that accent, you've never been to the United States. Where you were raised on television. It's so funny. I said that to Amanda. Yeah. I'm like, man, he sounds like he's been here before. Yeah. Oh, what are you coming in from through Canada? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it makes sense when you know he's not from this planet. Oh, yeah. When you're, yeah. yeah. But that customs guy's like, ah, story checks out. <laughs> checks out. <laughs> I think he used a Jedi, a Yahweh mind trick on him. <laughs> a Yahweh mind trick. <laughs> so the minute I saw the vibe of this, uh, of Franco's music, I 
I knew the Tarantino connection. Mm -hmm. So I looked him up. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, Tarantino has used two of his songs in his own films. Has he? But they were previously written. It's not like he had them score. I don't even know if he's still alive. He, he, he like, uh, licensed them. Yeah, and so he he uses them in Death Proof and Django Unchained. No shit. There's two scenes where this, this gentleman's music kicks in, and... Did he do the very, music for the original Django, this guy? Uh, he may have. Because that would make sense, because yeah. there was a whole connection would come, yeah. come he, back I around. Think I can see him doing a nod to the original Django yeah. by using music Yeah, from he it. may have. Let me confirm that. But I, he may have. I think I did see that. We need an intern to look this shit up. Yeah, all. right? Yeah. I Actually, to be, and while you were talking about that, I did minimal re... I started, like... Because yeah. there's a lot of character, like, a lot of really great actors and, a whole, like, whole bodies of work. And as I started going into all this stuff, I was like... I'm not even gonna start talking about this because um, once you once you start talking about like you know a good Glenn Ford again, you start looking going down that road and start talking no, about his did, work. He did not do Django. Okay, that was Luis Enriquez okay. Bakalov. Nah. Yeah, that's but, a strange but name. He's got two songs in Tarantino films: Grindhouse at, or Death Proof in Grindhouse, okay. and then Django Unchained. Um, but also, he wrote some of the music that is used in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, get out of here, really? I've yeah. never seen that. Uh, but we're all familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, so his, he wrote, I mean... It's kind if, of like the televised version this, of this movie. Okay. If okay. you look at his soundtrack credits, he did... Somehow I don't think that's true. He did music in Curb Your Enthusiasm. It says up to 90 episodes. Wow. Mm. So his, his stuff is, you know, definitely in American culture. Sure, yeah. Wow. I thought that was in insanely intriguing. That is, and that's, 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 that is that's interesting. Great. Yeah, that's the that's the fun thing about discovering. I like that house. I, like I do staircase. too. Oh yeah, who the hell buys a gun for a kid? Oh yeah, what the hell? Someone didn't. <laughs> so explain. But she got it from her aunt. How did she get it? Because it was all it was all part of. Is the, it from? It's is part it of the plan. Because remember, she bought her that bird. Remember they showed the scene where she's talking to the oh. shopkeeper, and you see them put the bird in the box and wrap it. Okay. And then when she unwraps it, it's a gun. It's like a gun. it's all part of this whole. So who put the gun? Yeah, in Yeah, because they they examined the gun and stuff. It had no um. Uh, serial number, and then the bullets had no like make yeah. or anything on, like no, because uh, every bullet is like has its own unique. Uh, it was Zawin's like will. fingerprint mm -hmm. basically, and mm -hmm. it didn't have any of that. It was all blank. So who put the gun in there? It's Zawin's will. Z Z Zawin's will. Zawi Z Zetin Zetin Zetin. I can't remember Zetin? what the name is. It's that part. It's the evilness. It's the it's the embodiment of evil. It's the. It's a, who 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 made the the nanny jump off the roof with a rope around her? Who neck? made who? That's just a physical manifestation of evil. I love this guy's face here when they say the the one thing. This is the the uh -huh. scene where that's the the evil organization or whatever that's trying to raise the children. And, that's why you like this because they're like a cult. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. like a cult. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally, I thought yeah. Of, I thought of that when I was watching. It. I was like, that's why Justin likes it. So yeah, they're in this big conference room, all looking at Lance. I got th I got I got thinking when I was watching this. I, like as a kid, like you know, it's a teenager. You know, I'll listen to like Slayer and Deicide and stuff. I'm like, sure. oh yeah, this shit's awesome. This is like the devil and it's all like great and it's just stuff. But in, like, real life, like, it's not going to be, like, some schlub like me. Like, and people like me, it's like, oh, yeah, it's all devil people. It's going to be, like, people like this, like, yeah, power, power player. Like, power, people yeah, 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 yeah. People in power and stuff. Like, like um, that. in uh, Eyes Wide Shut, that group. Yeah, yeah, that group, yep. With their big orgy. They're all, like, powerful, you know. Orgy people. Orgy people. Powerful orgy people. Yeah. Look, that... Oh, I missed it. it was we can't have thing. orgies. No one would have an orgy with us. No. Man, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to go down this road again, but I just stumbled upon this. Uh, it was a uh, an audience review, and I just have to read it. It's from 2015, and it's just not fair. Okay. And it says, badly directed, photographed, written, and acted. This terrible thing uh, provided a paycheck for several slumming, highly regarded actors in supporting roles and the opportunity to watch two horrible performances by the lead actresses. A real stinker. That's, no. that, that, that just sounds like an angry person. That just yeah. sounds like someone that... Well, they just don't get it. They just don't I'm get it. Because I'm going to tell you what. Like, if I watched a movie that I despise that much, I don't think I would waste the time going on yeah. Rotten Tomatoes... Yeah. To show everybody you have an opinion about yeah. something. Also, uh, it, it, I don't know, you probably know this, but I know Italian films and a lot of, it, there's other countries that do it too, they record all audio in post. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't... ADR the entire thing. That's just how it's done. Was this the, like that, though? Yes. Yeah. There were some okay. scenes that yeah. were dreadfully done. Okay. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, Horribly that's just out how of the... sync. Well, I do know that. It's just um, how they do it. It's just their style. That's their their um their procedure right. for. Well, I know standard I know, practice. I, Jesus, I know what Dario Argento is because of the cameras he used to get those colors and everything. Sure, they were like super loud. No, that's like just a cultural thing. That's just what they that do. Well, no, I meant for him specifically. That's yeah. why he did it. Sure, that makes sense. Because those 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 cameras were so loud, you couldn't record because it would pick them up. They were yeah. so loud. Yeah. So the, he's like, I'll just do everything in post then. But yeah. that's specifically why he did it. Yeah. Because those cameras were like ungodly loud yeah. apparently no that's really cool that makes sense so the so i think that could be a little jarring to people like yeah because it doesn't quite it, it can mess with the performance of course so i'm telling you man like that's the the big thing and maybe you remember this mike that uh, no. they would say in school is bad audio and bad audio issues will take someone out of a film before sure. bad video. Sure, yeah, 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 Video could look like crap. Yeah. But people aren't going to abandon ship as quickly as they would with like out of sync audio yeah. or audio that sounds crappy. I think it goes the other way too. Like if you have really good audio, I think I can really draw. Oh yeah, in, yeah, totally. Oh I yeah. Remember, oh, I can't remember the movie. There was a weird like independent movie that had um. What's the guy in Buffalo 66? I'm having a hell of a time with names um, today. Vincent, Vince, Vincent Van Gogh. No. <laughs> Neither one of those Vincents. Vincent. Vincent. It's a Vincent. Uh, that's right. It's not the... Uh, Vincent Ga Gallo. Gallo. Yeah. Gallo. I believe it was him, and it was a movie I saw in the theater when I was <laughs> Van Gogh Seattle. and D'Onofrio. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Vincent Price? <laughs> um, it was a movie I saw in Seattle, and I was like, so it was around 2002 or something. And it was like an independent movie about like sexualized vampires or something like that. But Aren't all vampires sexualized? Oh, it was a real weird, like... Why do we sexualize vampires? It's, it's not it's fair. It's a secret desire to be a necromaniac. Mm. I don't know. Necromaniac? Necro necrophiliac. What's a I necromaniac? Wanna, I want to be a necromaniac. <laughs> Fuck being a necrophiliac. <laughs> I'm a necromaniac, bitch. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> necromaniac coming in. <laughs> anyway. Uh... What was I saying? Oh, I anyway, the sound in that movie, like, just the footsteps alone and everything, I was just Wait, like... Which movie was this again? I don't remember what it was called. I, I barely remember anything about the movie. If, if you look up uh, Vincent Gallo 2002 Sex Vampires or something, I don't know. It'll come... It was don't weird, look up Sex Vampires. I, I, That's already, I, already I, done. I, th I think if I remember correctly, it had something to do... I don't think they were quote-unquote real vampires, but I think there was, like, some weird... Trouble every day? Blood... That's what it was. No, is this a weird blood-drinking thing that these, like, really... So like, they weren't, like, actual vampires. Yeah, shit. It's gonna drive me nuts. Is we that can, what it is? That, that actually might be it. <laughs> What's it called? Trouble Every what's Day. This, what's it say about it? In Trouble about Every Day, he's an enigma. <laughs> A pharmaceuticals researcher who travels across most of America and the Atlantic Ocean to spend a honeymoon with sweetie Trisha Vesey. He obviously has an ulterior motive for being in Paris. He meets, uh, I don't know, what's... Uh, Maybe just search for blood drinking. No, yeah. I, just, I don't know. That might be it. I don't even actually recall, but I just remember that the sound of the footsteps and everything was very, like, it hurts your gun. Um, she's like, wow, take this. Just, uh, uh, you, the, with, you're talking about uh, sound design... Made me think of, have you ever seen, there's three three movies that these two made together, uh, Hel Helene Catet, Catet and Bruno Forzani, they're mo more modern, their three films were Amer, uh, The Strange Color of Your Body's Tears. Oh, I wanted to see that, I didn't see that. And Let the Corpses Tan. Okay. There's the three films they made, I have all three. Dude. There's very little dialogue in those movies. Mm -hmm. It's all about visuals and the music. Okay. It, yeah, I noticed from the one, you, the second one you said, that's it looked very yes. atmospheric and everything. Yes. That's why I wanted to see it. The third one's more of like a... Kind of has a more of a Western flair, but the first two were more, uh, more like Italian, like genre film kind of feel to them. But man, they're like... Visually, visually, like Argento, you know, so much attention to all the what you're looking at. Okay, but the cool. sound design also is nice. It's it's all about the sound design. So yeah, you should check those. Films Actually, out. I put that about this movie. I put about the sound. Yeah, and everything. I yeah, liked. Yeah. I thought it was. I yeah. thought it was very suiting and like a lot of the weird, like the screeching sounds and all. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Were cool. 
I do I do like I'm skipping ahead a little bit. There's the scene where the detective uh, it's Glenn Ford. Yeah. He follows her to school <laughs> yeah. and she gets off the bus and she's like, Fuck you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, Fuck. And then he's like, uh, where did you put the gun? The or what happened to the yeah, gun? Yeah. And she's like she's like, Come here and he comes over and she's she whispers in his ear. <laughs> Like, I was like, Jesus, man, she's brutal. Yeah, like how old is she supposed to be? Like twelve ish. I think she. I thought she was supposed to be eight because I think at the beginning he oh says he says. Yeah, at the she is. I th- I think the actress is older than that. She ain't she, eight. Yeah, she's, she's not eight. She's but, awesome, but she's very good. So what the hell is with these rant? I mean, it, I guess it made a little more sense as we watched it. But those random gymnastic cutaways during yeah. The- oh, that's the, it's the show. She shot her. Her mother's paralyzed now, mm-hmm. and it shows her that she's. She's still able. There's like no. It's. I think it's drawing. A, Sarah pointed it out mm-hmm. while they're showing her mother. Like even mm-hmm. when it shows her struggling mm-hmm. to like mm-hmm. regain like her walking, it, it cuts back and forth to her daughter just doing all these gymnastics yeah. and stuff. Like it, she has not a care in the world. She's yeah, still that's kind of what Angel. Yeah. Angel so, was just kind of like. You know, uh, she's she's her mom's in the hospital and she's out there doing gymnastics. Yeah, like even like look at the look at the bars and everything, and then it shows it, the, the picture of the mom in the cage. Mm-hmm. Like the mom's in the cage, confined to it, where she's. I think it's like kind of symbolic, like a juxtaposition. Yeah, no, it made more sense once you saw the mom, but they sh- started showing those cutaways like yeah. well before you knew what the hell they were trying to tell yeah. you. Maybe it's just building up, so yeah, yeah. Just, kind of, kind of building to that. Yeah, like what? It, what is this? Oh no! Yeah, I, I do like the juxtaposition between the gymnastic bars and then her using the bar, to, the mother so using like the bar to up. help sit up. Yeah, I thought it was funny. I don't know what I watched. <sighs> That's a grown ass woman. That ain't no kid. <laughs> I, I was watching something and her they mannerisms. said something. They referred to the her mother in this as like, and uh, yeah, some about oh that woman that you thought you knew something that she was in, which I thought was funny because I remember watching this and I was like, is that's not the woman from? Uh, she does look familiar to me. She does look very familiar. And I, I you talking about the mother? Yeah, yeah, I thought she was in. Uh, I thought it was the woman in uh, Fletch. Oh, that, man, I have not seen that in a yeah, and, and, very and, long time. And I think I looked at it briefly and it wasn't. Yeah, I don't think she's been in much. I think she eventually ended up marrying. He was like one of the heads mm-hmm. of ILM or something. And then yeah, went on oh, to wow. be like big wig in like Hollywood. Huh. And I don't think she's done anything really huh. since. I mean, maybe she's done a handful of stuff around that time. Interesting. But. Oh, this is really eerie, too, when she's just sitting in the dark going up and down the thing, mm-hmm. waiting for him yeah. to come back. Oh, yeah, yeah, Which I think also is a power play. She's constantly playing around in that chair. Yeah, and, the, like and, the, toy, and uh, Lance like, Henriksen is like, don't play on there. That's not a toy, you know. Yeah. But she does, yeah. But yeah, that whole lighting situation, it was real dark mm-hmm. and all the lights yeah. come up. I also thought it was super... Cre- <laughs> Imagine being this woman. It's super creepy, like, her husband-to-be, or like her... The man in her life and her child are both in cahoots. Yeah, like they have no connection to each other. Aside yeah, but from they're both trying to like. They're both trying to like uh, uh, manipulate manipul- and, yep. and rule her. Like, and this poor guy, the guy who owned the shop, would just tried to sell a bird, being all friendly. Now he's like talking to police about where the gun came from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is on the detective's lip? Yeah, I think he had a little bit of a. Uh cold sore or something mm. I think they tried to cover it up cold sore yeah. I think back before high def that wasn't an issue yeah yeah so Joanne Nail is mm-hmm. the mother mm-hmm. and she only has a total of 22 film credits okay her first being in 1974 only that's more than any of us yeah but then her last was in 1988 okay. in an episode of Designing Women, and that was it. Oh, like, yeah. Okay. Done a handful of stuff, but... She was on there with some Annie Potts. TV shows, yeah. The Visitor. That may have been, like, her biggest Alpha role. Bar. The she's, Visitor? Yeah, she's done a bunch of TV stuff. Huh. Um, yeah, it's one pri- one primarily done, huh? TV, yeah. <laughs> the Visitor is, like, her biggest thing, and then Full Moon High... In oh yeah, that's um. I don't know that one. Who is it? Is that like Larry that a, Cohen or is something? Is that a werewolf movie? No, that's no. not Larry Cohen. I don't think. It, like Full Moon High is like a comedy. It's a um. Oh, it's like a screwball comedy. I've never seen that. Is that Larry Cohen? Yes, Larry. Cohen. Okay, yeah. I've never seen that one. Okay, that's right. She's in that. I do. I saw a documentary on him, and I remember them talking about that. And oh, was it the yeah. King Cohen or something? Yeah, like, yes. yeah. I haven't watched that yet. I want yes. to see it though. He's great. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. I'm I guess he just passed away. Re- uh, last few years, years. Yeah. yeah. But that's only one of three films that she's been in. Everything else was TV of wow. her total 22 film credits. Wow. So hasn't really done anything since 88. So but then again, I guess she married a very wealthy gentleman. I haven't done anything Do you since think she was thinking this was going to be her big break? I don't know, but I'm surprised. I mean, she's got a good look, and like yeah. I, I thought, yeah. I could have seen her, and you know, yeah, and she's not film. bad in this at all. Yeah. I, maybe she just didn't want to do it anymore. She's maybe no, she's, she's no Shelly Winters. No. Yeah, how about Shelly Winters? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I didn't know she was in this till she walked on oh, yeah. on screen. Yeah, so he brings his little uh, Yahweh brings his little bald disciple or children, Jersey, whatever is his name. Yeah, is. Jersey. Brings his little bald disciple children who look a little older now. They look like adults. Here. <laughs> they look like men. They age differently in our atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they don't do anything. The rest, of, they're just there. Do they? Do they play any role? Or did I miss anything? Maybe they turn into the birds. I have no idea. No clue. Um, I think they're just like kind of like. Are like, they just like observing? He just brings them around I th- I just think to teach just, them. I think they're just there to be backup or something. Because he says something later about oh, when you meet my people or something like that, mm-hmm. um, which was actually really cool. Because like if you think about Sarah and I were talking about this because we we're just we we're both thinking the same thing. Um, when you think about like if you want to talk about the Exorcist or the Omen or mm-hmm. any of these other evil child movies Mm -hmm. they're always trying to destroy the evil destroy the evil but he goes and he's trying to like he's not trying to destroy he's like he's like he understands he's like come with me like he's trying to save her yeah Yeah. I like how the bus almost hits her but yeah Yeah, she runs right in front of it yeah (laughs) yeah wait but um, <laughs> but yeah, I like I like how it's like he's like I don't want to like he doesn't want to destroy her. He wants to he wants to like almost like a Charles Xavier thing. Wants yeah. to kind of like uh, I mean she ran in front of that bus. You know what they say? What's that? What do they say, Mike? <laughs> what is it? Evil will always triumph because good is dumb. Oh but yeah, it's yeah, backwards. Yeah. So a real star in the movie, this uh, seventy one Bu- Buick LeSabre. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I really like. Every time car. I see Glenn Ford, I keep thinking of uh, Robert Forster. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't look exactly like him, but for mixed some with, mixed with Ian Holm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Sarah said yeah, yeah. it reminds yeah. her of Ian Holm. At this scene, but when yeah, he, you're right. when he's pursuing the school bus that she's on, and and <laughs> he gets out, doesn't she say to him, and I quote, "I don't like you. You're a child molester. I bet you yes. do dirty things to children." Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She yeah. was like really on thick. She was, was like, man. She was playing some psychological games yeah. with him, man. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cops don't smoke pipes anymore like they used to. Yeah, they should. Did you smoke a pipe? No, not him, but the other one that he was sitting there talking to about the interviews mm-hmm. and the bullets. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cop was sitting. There. It wasn't a corn cob pipe, but it was close to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember uh, my uncle, my, my dad's brother, he used to smoke a pipe. Yeah. I remember he always had a pipe. He was always, like, you know, tamping his tobacco yeah. down. Yeah. It smelled good. Mm-hmm. Whatever he, you know, cherry mm-hmm. tobacco or whatever he smoked. I was like, I always thought it smelled good. Mm-hmm. Never took up the habit, though. Yeah. No. I smoke a pipe now and then. I would. Yeah, so look, they, they had some really cool shots, Damn. really cool shots of the birds. Yeah. Like, there's a one shot. Oh, cl- the fucking birds. Another reference or another movie they kind of. Yeah, oh, yeah, the birds. Kinda, there's yeah. a bird in here and there's a bird in the birds. Come on, that's a bit of. No, 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 but there's like <laughs> a flock of birds and stuff that are very uh, integral Aggr- to the. Aggressive. <laughs> they're very integral to the. Uh, I, I mean, story. I could see that. I'm not going to dispute it. I don't know who yeah, they. There's, there's the pipe. He's yeah. got the pipe. Yeah, there's the pipe. So, yeah. Okay, so the bird shots, though, that they, that they filmed of these mm. birds, uh, there was two shots that stood out uh, uh, stood out to me with these birds. One was a bird squawking more towards the beginning of the movie. Like, okay. it's like squeal. And they had all these bird screeches and mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. That was like the, the jump scare moments was these bird screeches. And uh, that one was really good. And then there was a really awesome shot of the bird later in the movie when it was attacking the mother character. Mm-hmm. And then it... When it's done attacking her, it flies down the hallway right at the camera and like perches uh, okay. right next to the camera. Okay. And it was like a really well done shot. Hmm. It must have taken them freaking forever to try to oh, get that shot. Yeah. yeah. But that's me, not what the actress. That's probably why she don't act anymore. Yeah. She's Are like, we, screw this. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, that's take, a, take that's, 467. We didn't quite get the bird yeah. to land right. <laughs> she's all scratched up and stuff. <laughs> like, uh, they, Miserable. They, the one, Late for one or several of the reviews talked about how this wasn't filmed well and everything. I think that's wrong. 
There's some interesting shots and stuff in this movie. There were some that confused me. Like, it, the shots when he was the detective was doing the interviews, mm. and they had that the camera kind of trucking behind them, left oh, and yeah. right, behind mm. the people's heads. But it was hanging behind their heads for too long okay. before it would finally pop out from behind their head. Like, that stuff confused me. I'm like... It's really not necessary. What are you, what are you going that for? That would there? be more of an editing, <laughs> well, as opposed to yeah. Well, why did they? Cho- when why was the director okay with the editor choosing those shots? True. Like maybe he just was like, yeah, it looks good. Like then again, this might tie back in with what you were saying earlier with the Italian film dubbing. Maybe they were like, get me as many shots where I don't have to worry about the dubbing as possible. True, true, Hide true. their lips. Yeah. So yeah. when I dub it, it doesn't matter what their face yeah. is doing. But I don't know. I, I, I wonder what, what that is, but maybe that's the case. Yeah, it could be a combination of things or, or, or one of multiple things. Or hence combination. <laughs> 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 or it could be a series of individual things that are combined into one, ah, you know, like a you know, lump I had, sum. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, more of a lump sum of mm. combined elements. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Well, shit. Fuck me, right? Yep. So. <laughs> Fuck me, Ronnie. Listen, one of the coolest scenes in here. What was, what was that crack voice? <laughs> Oh, me? Yeah, you're like, oh. what of the... <laughs> One of the coolest scenes in this film, and I'm sure you guys... I'm surprised with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys will agree with this one. The attack by a bird while driving, and then everything that came... Oh, Holy yeah. shit. That the... whole... That whole situation... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...is that... pretty awesome. It was cool. Detective Jake Durham. Okay. So, Detective... Not, not to be confused with Bull Durham. Yeah, yeah. Detective Durham is uh, driving, I guess... Is he following? He's... Where's he, he going finds, at that point? He finds that bird that the shopkeeper Oh, that's said. right. He mm-hmm. has it. And then he takes it and puts it in his car, and he's taking it back as, like, evidence or something. Mm-hmm. That it wasn't a gun or something. So then... And then I think that's when they send the bird after, or like the, the, the evil power send the bird after his eyeballs. Yeah, so driving. tax him, starts pecking out his eyes and stuff, cars swerving all over the place. Yeah. I mean, that was really well done. Driving yeah. over cones, yeah, yeah. cars crashing oh, all yeah, over yeah. the place. Dude, when he hit that motorcycle head on, that dude's Listen to me. dead. Listen that dude is dead. <laughs> that's what I have written on here. How the hell <laughs> did that guy not break his back? The yeah. back of his head hit the back of his boots. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 every time I watch Watch this movie. I cringe every time I see it. I'm like, it's, that it's dude is dead. Oh I hope God. that person's okay because that was just. Like, he made the ultimate <laughs> sacrifice for the visitor, though. Oh, so yeah. yeah, he may have. I, I, no, I think we would have come across that if if there. Was, I'm going to look it up right now. Oh man. Yeah, I don't see any uh, stuntmen deaths on the. Yeah, that must have been a well choreographed. Yeah, I, or it was a dummy. Or yeah, or a really, <laughs> a really good dummy. Good dummy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that there's no. It way was a person. Was I know it was. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's got this sore on his lip this entire movie. Yeah, maybe they only had him for a couple. That's, days. They probably only had him for a couple of days. He, they only had him in the length of uh, one cold sore. <laughs> Ooh. He also has a little scar, a la Harrison Ford. What's the thing we joke around about all the time, where, where they say never work with children or animals or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a really good job of both of them in this. They don't get credit for that. Yeah. Look at that bird. Yeah, you try working with a goddamn bird. Yeah. Uh, look at these. Uh, they just a car going nuts, crashing yeah. over cones through cars. Other cars, cars swerving. Cars, and... cars crashing into each other. Yeah, man. This is well uh, well uh, choreographed. Choreographed. Hopefully it was Ca- choreographed. Hopefully it was choreographed. Hopefully it wasn't just like, yeah, go, yeah. Go, go on the hot. We got go, like, go out there and cross some oh, shit. Oh, oh god! Look at his damn. whole body like yeah. locks up. <laughs> Jesus! Holy crap! God damn! That had to hurt. Oh my god! He hit explosion. a car full force. Man, he had to go to the hospital after that. At least yeah, get... all he had on was a helmet and like some no, elbow look, pads. Look, watch the fence is clearly behind yeah, the car. Yeah, it is. And it's already it, past the car. And then and then it's wrapped around. And yeah. It's wrapped. Look, yeah, this was in the trailer, and it's like, why are all these guys mad? R- like, yeah, he yeah, looks he's, mad. Like he's running the bat, with the baseball yeah. bat. Yeah, yeah but he's but, running to help with ma- brandishing ma- a baseball yeah. bat. Listen, I did have that on my notes. Car wrapped in chain link. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah that, that was interesting because cool. yeah. there's no way they can rescue him. Yeah, yeah. He was locked in there, and he's not unconscious. I did. I thought that struggle. was clever. And and then didn't somebody in here drove a Thunderbird? 
yeah, it was uh, the mom. Sun, the, thunder yeah, chicken. The birds. And it must have been it must have been modified with the hand controls or something. Oh uh, yeah. Mm. Listen, and I'm not trying to be rude. But is hey, okay, we're all friends. Is Lance Henriksen really going to ask this woman who's who's paralyzed from the waist down to come say bye to him at the airport? Do you I know how much too. of a bitch it is to drive to the airport? Well, he's a, he's kind of general. an asshole. Though. Yeah, just yeah. in general. <laughs> but in this movie, he's an asshole. He is, but he's. Why can't you just swing by and say bye like, before you go to the like airport? Like for instance, when he announces that they're that he's planning to marry her without her oh, yeah. being yeah. aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> but he's under the gun, man. This is like his... Yeah, he has to. He has yeah, to. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. if he doesn't make with the with the baby, so he's out. Let me ask a question. So this crew of people that are in this boardroom mm-hmm. that are in charge of They're ensuring basically that... Satanists. Yeah, ensuring that term. the woman gets knocked up so the seed of Satan can live on. Mm-hmm. Are they human? I believe they are. Yeah, I believe they are. And yeah. they were swayed by the forces of evil? I think they're trying to get in on the ground floor. I think I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's one of those situations where it's like, the end's coming anyway. I want to be on the right side of this. Yeah, yeah. They're or, trying to like... Or trying to get power. They're trying to facilitate it and then, and then, and then like... Get, like you said, get on the ground floor. Yeah, like, oh, we brought you here. Like, we're, you they're know, trying to cur- show loyalty. They're trying to curry favor. Curry favor. Mm. During the ice skating scene, she's skating around, like, beating up boys and shit. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the, the old <laughs> man... Up, she's throwing them through yeah. glass windows yeah, yeah. and shit. The old man, Jersey, is walking down a set of stairs that is apparently close to this ice skating rink. But it takes him. Oh my these god! These steps. It keeps cutting back to him. It's like the scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. where the guy's running, and it keeps cutting back to him. It's like, doo, 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 doo. and then the guards like <laughs> yeah. looking at him. It's also it's actually an escalator that goes up, but they stopped it to film oh, the steps mm, thing. Yeah, if you look, it's an escalator. Did? Yeah, it's an but es- it's turned off. Yeah, and I think it's like something like the I don't know, not the world's, but it's like Atlanta's tall, like longest. Uh, escalator. Let me see. I gotta find this <laughs> largest ball um, of twine. Like, what is it? Uh, escalator temporarily stairs. Oh yeah. Sorry for the convenience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Hedberg. Uh, Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. <laughs> the logistics of this don't make sense to me. Like, did she throw them so far? Like, there's windows next to the ice skating rink. She has the power. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like. And then it does that weird freeze Blur- frame. Blurry freeze frame. They should have started playing oh, that wow. freeze frame song. Da, 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 da. Sam Peckinpah had trouble remembering his lines because of his difficulty with his dialogue. His voice was dubbed by another actor. Uh, yeah, so okay. That's interesting. Why was uh, Sam Peckinpah in this movie? <laughs> Why was he in this? What? Did yeah. you really need Sam Peckinpah to play that character? No. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just had an opportunity. I, I, I'm curious to see how they, like, roped in all these, like, names. All right, Paige Connor wore a bald cap for her scene in the greenhouse. All the other kids in the greenhouse scenes had their heads oh, shaved. Oh, you could tell their heads were shaved, yeah, yeah the other kids. Um, Paige Connor had trouble saying harsh profanity to Glenn Ford in her big confrontation scene with him. Well, she did a pretty good job because yeah. what they got on film, or at least they had somebody overdub it. But it it looks like she's saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard hard to know for sure because we weren't there. Yeah, according to Lance Henriksen, the cast agreed to do the movie to get a free trip to Italy. Uh, Henriksen uh, dislikes the movie, calling it a real turkey. So all these actors were like, sure, I'll go yeah. to Italy. Yeah. Holy shit. All right, shit. so during the ice skating sequence, mm-hmm. John Houston is shown going down a large staircase. Mm-hmm. This staircase is actually the world's longest freestanding escalator. Oh, shit. It usually only goes up, so during filming, it was turned off so Houston could walk down it. As of 2019, the same escalator can be ridden on the uh, on the CNN headquarters tour in Atlanta, Georgia. No shit. So, yeah, they turned it off so he could go down. See, I kind of knew something. Yeah. So, wait, it only goes up? Is there is there one that goes down next to it? <laughs> well, going up's the hard part. But I'm saying, like, usually there's an up and yeah. a down. So Sam Peckinpah only worked one day on the film. Okay. Uh, the bedroom scene between Barbara and Raymond was totally improvised. The the opening scene, yeah, where they're laying in bed with the big yeah. uh, the big animal skin blanket or whatever that was. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, according to the interview with Paige Connor on the Code Red DVD, Shelley Winters smacked Connor for real several times while both rehearsing and filming a key confrontation scene with her. Shelley Winters, 
Where did you all know her from? Movies. No, but what movies? Just ones that she's in. Oh my god, Justin. <laughs> from this, are you familiar? Do you know? Her from I know this? who she is. I can't think. Yeah, of what she's there's right two that I know her from. I've, I've, okay. okay, this is the third. I've okay. seen her in a couple. Uh, Poseidon Adventure. Yes, uh, that was it. Oh yeah, that was it. I looked it up and I was like, oh, Angel, she's in Poseidon Adventure because yeah. we've seen that. And. Pete's Dragon. Yes, and I mentioned that one. But well, I, why didn't you answer that I, when I asked you? I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I knew them, too. <laughs> no, no, no. I did specifically. I looked her up. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that, but I forgot. I was yeah. sleepy. And yeah. mentioned that. I mentioned that to Angel. Well, Pete's Dragon I haven't seen since I was a kid, so I wouldn't have remembered that. You're still a kid. Oh. You're a man in a <laughs> kid's body. A, I haven't seen that since I was kid size. <laughs> I kid. Cut, All right, but right. well, that, that's cool to see that because I wrote on my notes ice skating scene longest stairs ever. It really it was. It literally <laughs> is. It, well, longest escalator anyway. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Crazy. That's pretty funny. Glad we got to the bottom of that. All right. So listen, one the thing. The bottom of this. St- <laughs> 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 I'm glad he got to the bottom of it too. <laughs> Finally, how that car phone work? Oh, oh yeah. yes, the car phone. <laughs> That's a straight up like r- bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> holy like... shit. I mean, look, I know they had some money because where'd the money come from? Yeah, yeah. But that yeah. phone was something. I was. That was like a landline dragon behind <laughs> that thing. It was. I did they not? I thought they had car phones like that back in the day. Like that? I thought so. I remember them looking more like I like those know. big boxy. Yeah. yeah, I remember those. That was like literally like a house phone. It was. Cord. Yeah, it was like. Did they? Did they? How? It has to. It well, has, they obviously got it from the prop department. It's they're a like, landline. we need a car phone, and they're like, we only have. A phone. Yeah. <laughs> After she hung up, she changed. She checked to change return. Yeah. All right, I'm going to tell you the one thing I did not expect out of this mo- this movie. You out of this mother? Out of this mother. <laughs> I did not expect a cripple molester joke. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was like, okay, That's a we're just watch. getting to it. All right, Justin is showing me a photograph of a... What year is That's that? In the, it, car phones in the 50s. 50s, wow. And it is a legit, like... How does that it, work? I mean, it's on the internet. Yeah, it's now be listen. True. How how does it work? How, what's it hooked up to? Yeah, where's the signal go? Does it go, like, through the radio? It's got to be. I mean, how else would the yeah. signal get out? That was before... Man. That's before science. All right. Before, <laughs> science. That's before science. Before science. <laughs> Yeah, anybody, does anybody out there, anybody at all, know how car phones that looked like house phones worked back in the freaking 50s? If you know, hit us up on our social media. <laughs> Jeez, for real. <laughs> at McGuffin Guild on Twitter. And uh, we have a Facebook now? We do, the Search McGuffin Guild. the McGuffin yeah. Guild on Facebook. Or or uh, Discord. Discord. Yeah. Justin? Discord slammed, though. So. Yeah, I put a little work in there to free some stuff up. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. so it should run a little smoother. Um, Atlanta and a soundstage in Rome. That's where this film was filmed. Wow. So primarily, I mean, you can clearly tell. I mean, I'm yeah, guessing the sure. space, the otherworldly scenes were shot in a soundstage. Atlanta. In yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Summertime in Atlanta. Uh, how about those tow truck drivers? I'm oh, not, yeah, not going to get my butt shot off. Yeah, they were oh, entertaining. Yeah. I was like, well, I want to see a movie about them. Yeah, yeah. a little, con- little spin off movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be funny to have a spinoff movie with them and all these crazy movies, like like them just kind of rolling up, like cleaning up after the exercise. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the Sam Peckinpah, he played the Sam, Dr. Sam Collins. Yeah. Okay. Which is the, the ex. So would he have been the father of... Um, I guess so. Oh. That would make sense. Well. Hmm. But yeah, I didn't expect Seed of Satan abortion... Uh, that yeah. was a left turn I wasn't expecting yeah, yeah, in this yeah. film. It has everything. <laughs> it has everything. <laughs> the hot dog stand. We got to spend some time on the hot dog stand. So the guy goes in, the old man, Jersey, Yeah. goes into this hot dog stand. The, uh, the girl is up on the top of a building and starts plucking the nuts and bolts out of uh, emergency escape. Steps. Man, I must have missed that. And the whole steps dropped and crushed the hot dog stand, and the old man was in it. 
which I guess the man that worked there got killed because you never saw him. Collateral damage. I missed that. I must have looked away from him. The, but that was really the most iconic moment. Oh, well, shit. Where the old man Jersey walked out from behind the rubble mm. and his theme kicked in. Okay. And it was like legit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, like, well, you know what? That gives me an excuse to watch it again. All right. Yeah, you'll do that. Where are you, old man? Bastard. Come out. Mm. Through the, uh, the House of Mirrors. Where was that? Were they in... Atlanta. No, but what were they in? Did they say they went into a funhouse or something? Is that that's not the thing that they were the, his his minions were setting up? Remember they were bringing up all the boxes and it shows them constantly. It you know shows what? them constantly. So they did have a purpose. That they were setting sense. up a house of mirrors. Is that what they were doing? They were going to they that, were going to run a carnival. That that's made sense. Doing. Yeah, they're yeah. just a bunch of carnies, <laughs> just a bunch of misunderstood carnies from outer space. Those space carnies. <laughs> Barbara, how did she become the one that could carry the seed of Satan? Well, I think it's just genetics. Because she's he, descended, right? Yeah, she's a descendant. She's descended from him. She's a descendant of Satine. Yeah, because yeah. Satine came down and, and started had, knocking and up a bunch of bred with ladies. women. So was there anything... So if she is in the same bloodline as Katie... That's her name, right? The girl? The girl, yeah. And Katie's a bit of a handful yeah. to say it that's a yeah nicely. that's one way to say it was the mother does she have a mean streak in her well do the, they ever hint at anything that doesn't seem that maybe way maybe it skips a generation or maybe it needs to be cultivated. maybe it's like it's like baldness yeah. like male pattern yeah, baldness yeah. i was trying to think back if they hinted at anything right. in her past that like you know she had it, the only thing I really picked up from her was that she said, you know, I don't really want to have any more kids because, mm. you know, Katie's kind of a handful. And, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not interested. But it wasn't like they, there was no like line where it was like, you know, I was a bad kid myself. And I I don't I just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't know if they were trying to, like, give any kind of impression as to what kind of child she was. If it was something that they all dealt with. Yeah, down the I don't bloodline know. Or, what is the old man doing for the last half hour? Now, before the birds show up, he's standing up on that roof just watching a light show. He's preparing to go home. Is 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 that what he's doing? I mean, did they really have to, like... I mean, they really, like, they really let that breathe. They really pound that in. What is his mode of transportation? Well, I mean, you're dealing with really complex things that are beyond are our understanding. <laughs> are we, though? Uh, you know, under some light speed stuff. Um, and some... There's power of belief. <laughs> uh, there's uh, see, some some hand jive. There's like some some bad. Uh, I guess it would be what blue screen back then. They didn't really use green screen. I kept waiting for that little cluster of stars to spin around. That's what I o. thought was gonna happen. Uh, I swear to God, well, every time they showed that <laughs> shot, I was waiting for the stars to start moving or something. Mm, yeah, and then nothing, and then they would just go back to like the lights dancing on the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I just felt like, and I'm glad the birds showed up because otherwise I would have doubted what the hell he was even doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bird neck stab on Lance Hendrickson. <sighs> Yeah, they just, I guess they got tired of trying to figure out a way to get a real bird to, like, do that, so they just got a fake-ass bird and just went for it. <laughs> yeah, just plug it right in. Just, just go, go for it. Just plug it right, right in his it. neck. Yeah. But, yeah, even leading up to that, they kept cutting back to the angle of the camera, like, right behind this plastic bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what made, are you gonna do? Made me laugh. Katie is... Satine's only descendant. Well, youngest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the end of... The end of the line. The end of the line. So, yeah. Having a boy would have been much easier. Think about it. I mean, think about the lengths they had to go with this situation. Well, is that what they wanted? Is that what they... Did yeah, they that's want what they were, they were trying to get a boy. Yeah, okay. yeah that's why they okay. wanted And I, I, I mean, sure think about that. Specific. That boy could have then taken that bloodline and... Spread it. But you, like when you fire. have... When you have a but very set-in-her-ways woman... That becomes difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's we true, see. Yeah. Here. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you have Lance Hendrickson trying to like you know wheel and deal and yeah. butter her up, and then finally the 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 the, the uh, guys in suits for the council they're like, all right, we're gonna have to use drastic measures here. So we, they got a bunch of guys dressed like aliens that abduct her and forcibly impregnate yeah. her, yeah. which is horrific. That is horrific. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's the route they had to go. So I guess they were like, yeah, we need a freaking boy because this is just not going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta get this. We gotta get this moving her moral fibers are much were they were, yeah. was she like running out of time to become pregnant is that 
Well, I mean, or did it have to be like where they're like star star? Well, alignments? I don't think so there was happen? a major rush until she got paralyzed. Uh, and then that I, was part of their plan, I think, there too. Was it? Yeah, to make her dependent on him. Oh, okay. I think that was sense. all part of the plan because she could because I think she was getting tired and she, like. Just like she might, she might have laughed. Yeah, yeah, she was a flight risk. So there, guess what? I mean, she's getting older. I mean, you only have. I mean, yeah. I don't know how you know this? A woman only has so many eggs <laughs> in her lifetime. Mike is just flabbergasted. Yeah, right now. and you, you could have. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being as we're the MacGuffin Guild, oh yeah, as most of you may know, uh, the MacGuffin is a, a plot device used to drive along a story in a film. But we like to use the film as a MacGuffin to spark conversation. So, Justin, what yeah. do you have to offer to the the crew here? So, this is more. I know, like Sarah, when she was younger, she made money by being a babysitter and stuff like that. There's mm. the babysitting is. Al have you, Albert Fish babysitter. Albert Fish babysitter. <laughs> have you guys ever <laughs> remember a time when you had to babysit? And Ooh. then it turned out that that child was uh, the the spawn of some otherworldly demon that you had to <laughs> yes. end. Have any of you ever babysat? You and I babysat your younger cousins, your three cousins. Oh, did we? Girls one time. Yeah. Remember we were like sliding down the stairs and stuff? I think sliding it was- Sliding down the stairs. It was your three cousins. We were well, like watching them. Like we were there and we were just watching them because they were there or whatever for the weekend or something. Mm. You don't remember that? I yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, it was just you and I and, and, and the three of them. We we watched them. Um, hmm. I've never... I can't say that... We I, were in charge? Yeah. Who put us in charge? We were like seniors oh, in high school. That doesn't mean shit. And it wasn't Look like... Look at us. Like, we're 40. Yeah, we were, yeah. We were sliding down the stairs. I still wouldn't trust us to babysit. <laughs> I don't have kids for that very reason. <laughs> um, I have... Thinking about it, I don't believe I've ever babysat solo... Mm. Like it was always like I was. Well, at, yeah, you can't be trusted. I was at your house, or like uh, one of my ex girlfriends. I babysat because she would babysit for people, so I went with her a couple times. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say her name, but uh, the one that we went to the church and played bingo, and he was wearing a Slayer shirt. But like the yeah, no, Nazis I'm with you. Oh, okay, you uh, looked confused. No, I'm. I'm wondering why you're being so specific here. I think we're all with you. Well, you only I, had a couple girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> That you know about. Yeah. <laughs> that was convincing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she, bingo, Slayer, got it. Yeah, she she babysat here and there, and I would, you know, go with her occasionally. Mm -hmm. I have a question. It doesn't involve babysitting. Has anyone here ever been attacked by a bird-like creature? No. Um, I have, well, yeah. I've had problems with geese in the past, <laughs> multiple occasions. Geese could be assholes. Yeah, they could be a, They could be aggressive. And we were—I was just talking to Jim about this. Do you ever see their 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 inside of their mouths? Uh uh. No. They're otherworldly. There's like rows and rows and rows of teeth. They have teeth. And then they have teeth on their tongues. <laughs> what? Insane. Look, it looks like a sarlacc pit when the inside of their mouth. It's I insane. didn't even know they had teeth. Oh yeah. Are they actual like made of what our teeth are? Or are they like? Uh, I don't know. They look like what, shark teeth the, or something. What's the what uh, cartilage? Are they like cartilage or something like that? I don't, I don't know. know. Check them out. They're horrible looking though. I did not know they even had teeth. Um, I didn't know birds had. Do birds have teeth? I some maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, so I uh, back when I worked security, mm -hmm. oh, I, remember I used that. to drive around and we had geese all over the property. Hmm. So I, you know. They're always in pairs or in groups or something like that, but there was always this one lone goose mm -hmm. that was always hanging around the back of this building. It's always a quiet one, man. Always yeah. a quiet one. No, it was not quiet at all. Because it would like you would come running up at the car. <laughs> Probably why he was alone, because he was an asshole. Yeah, or his mate died or something. I don't know. We don't know. It could be anything. better. Yeah, yeah, he could, could be, be upset. Better. It could be like, life sucks. I'm going to make it <laughs> shitty for everyone else. <laughs> like chasing after the car and stuff. One time, and I, I would never, people know me, I, I've never heard an animal. Like, uh -huh. I love animals, but I was just kind of goofing off when it came with the car. And uh, I went by it first, and it's hissing and stuff. And when I had to circle back, and on the way back, I was, uh, it was like coming at the car, and I like did a little quick little swerve towards it, uh -huh. just kind of like scare it. It was not scared at all. Yeah. It kind of like flew over the top <laughs> of the car, landed behind me, and I kind of stopped. I was like, whoa, man. 
and then it came running after the car. <laughs> Holy shit. And I was like, this is crazy. And I swear it sounds like I'm making us making this up, but it's true. I started taking off and it's coming after me and it took flight. Oh, it's, it's, it's like ooh, ooh, flapping his wings. Yeah, like behind coming you. after me. And I look over and it's like at my window. I've seen like, I've seen hissing at me in the window. I was like, fuck this thing, dude. I was like seriously scared because I was like rolling up the window. He's like <laughs> I never mess with that goose ever again. That, they're crazy and they're big. Like you should have tried to befriend him after that. Yeah. No, it's it's. No, I ruined that. Dude. No, 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 no. Yeah. I think he was just looking for a friend. <laughs> oh, you think you're funny? You're gonna put your you're gonna drive your car into me? Well, guess what? <laughs> That's even like praying mantises are so small, and like, oh, that's kind of a weird looking bug. And then once it notices it, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's like, dude, oh, yeah, yeah. When yeah. bugs like, look at you when that? they're aware, like those spotted lantern flies. Yeah. You tried to kill one of them yet? Nah, I have not I come across recently. One. We got some them. here. Do you? Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, you got murdered them. And listen, here's what happens: they jump almost like fleas. Oh shit! So do when they? you go to step on it, if you miss it, like that first leap is a doozy. They'll do a but big then, hop. Yeah, a big hop. But then their second hop is a little smaller because I guess they used up all their energy yeah. on that first hop. But they are aware. Like when mm. they go, when you go for them, they come back at you. Like once they regain their, they their footing, I don't know what they do. But um, one attacked Amanda the other day because she <laughs> went for it and then it regained its footing and came right at her. Like what? it just went for her. I've never so, seen one in person. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. I've killed like three or four of them at this point. I'm yep. doing my duty. What, are you stepping on them? Yeah, I'm just, whatever. I think They're I hit big. one with a flip-flop. They are big. How do you feel crunching and everything? Yeah. Oh, that must yeah. make a mess. Yeah, it's, Yuck. I mean, it's not ideal. Yeah, I don't but really, but there's been three or four that I've seen in the yeah. yard that I, I go for them. My, so my mom was like, she loved uh, ladybugs. Like, mm-hmm. I was her thing. She like, she had like a tattoo of a ladybug on yeah. her foot and all this stuff. She loved ladybugs, so like recent, you know, I was recently she passed away. So, and it's in the summertime, so everyone's seeing ladybugs, and so it's like you know you're, you want to think that you know people are still out there mm-hmm. looking after you. So every time you see like a ladybug, we think it's like good mm-hmm. luck and everything. So you know we're all looking for signs, and you know everyone's dealing with stuff the, the way they do. So my brother sends a a picture uh, to our group. Which text. brother? My older brother. Okay. And it sends a, uh, a picture. He's like, I woke up this morning and there was a ladybug there. I think mom's like looking, you know, basically wishing me a happy mm-hmm. day this morning. He sends a picture of it and it's not a ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> and Kristen's like, no, nah, that's a spotted lion. <laughs> that's a spotted <laughs> lion fly. Kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, it's Ross sharing this like peaceful. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's sweet. She's looking. He shows the picture. It's like yeah. this big gnarly <laughs> <laughs> has, has he ever seen a ladybug? It makes you wonder. Well, that's what I'm wondering. You know, like maybe he just thinks there's different breeds of ladybugs <laughs> or like, something. This is one beefy ladybug. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah. Me or was he just joking? It's like the queen ladybug. You can hear it breathing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, it, like, it jumped at me. Yeah. It was making me breakfast. The thing is big. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Yeah. You want some eggs? Oh, yeah, I got a smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bacon's a little burnt, but the toast is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jeez. Who are you? Jesus Your mom Christ. sent me. Uh, <laughs> Your mom sent me. <laughs> 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 Wanted to have a fantabulous day. Oh. Yeah, but it was... My- <laughs> Yeah, but it was very messed up. I felt it was like, oh man, because we're all oh, sharing. Did he, did he kill it? I don't know. <laughs> he said totally takes the wind out of I don't the know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> what, a, oh. what a horrible plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, That's God. a tragic yet hilarious yeah. story. <laughs> I was debating my debate on it. I was like, it's too good. Because it was like, we're all in this mode. Because we're all yeah, like, a, yeah, we're yeah. all still emotional. Yeah, we're all sure, still like, sure. looking for these like signs and, and like see, stuff. And he's you like, you know what though, man? Because I learned this through some of the recent family tragedies. Yeah. It's that humor sometimes oh, yeah. that gets you yeah. by. And it was. It was it's kind a, of like, it's a, so she, I bet you, levity, that's your mom. She sent yeah. the spotted lantern fly. I, think, I can see her getting a kick. Like, that go. would be her. She would get a kick out of that. That levity kind of eased the pressure a little bit. Oh, yeah. God. Holy shit, man. That's that's too much. Jeez. So, Ooh. yeah, as far as being attacked by creatures in flight, there's one story I always remember. We used to live on the water in, yeah, yeah. in Earlville, Maryland, way back in the boondocks on the Chesapeake Bay. And I, that really it doesn't play in the story. But I guess the point is it's out in the middle of nowhere. And 
my mom used to hang laundry like you know we'd always go swimming in the bay so she'd hang our bathing suits and stuff on a clothesline outside sure. So the one time she went out there to take the clothes off the clothesline, and she's just taking them down. It's all like swim trunks and whatever. And in in one of the pairs of swim trunks was a bat, and it uh. flew right out and wrapped around her face Ooh. and like flapped its wings a bunch of times. Oh I guess God. they were both just as startled. Woo. My mom's standing there, this bat wrapped around her face. The bat's freaking out because it now, did got it like, woken up. I'm guessing. Did it like grip onto her? No, or I think it just, it just like went to fly, fly off and yeah, it flew yeah, yeah, into yeah. her face. Thus, its wings started <laughs> flapping on the side of her face Damn. before it could regain its Equi- like yeah, it's it's uh, um, figure out how to get out of trouble. Oof. But That's, yeah, oh, so. I would love to see that. Woo. That's hilarious. Uh, All right, let's rate this puppy. What do you think? Uh, who wants to go first? Not me. Uh, not Justin, uh, this is your film. You know what? You want me to go first? I'll go first. It doesn't matter. Wait, go ahead. So Justin is. It's Justin's pick. Justin is Julio Paradisi. You said it's his film. Yeah, it's uh Is that another Justin Jones? Julio Paradiso. You know what? Michael J. Paradise. That makes sense. Justin Jones sounds like what an Italian person would think an American person's the name, name is. is. Yeah. So you know what? God damn, you schooled us all. Bam. Damn. I wonder if uh did the guy who did Leviathan was he Italian? Who did that movie? Because it's Ernie Hudson's character no. named Justin Jones. Isn't that um... Oh yeah, I remember that. Yes. You know, did I I've told you before, you're not the first Justin Jones I know. I wasn't the first? Leviathan no. didn't um damn it. Or was it Deep Star Say? I always get them mixed up. No, I think it, it might it be Leviathan. Leviathan. Yeah. Mike, you you would remember him. You're not the first Justin Jones that Justin I ever Jones? knew. There was a Justin Jones in our elementary school. Was there? Mm-hmm. And I knew him before I knew you. George P. Cosmatos. Uh Panos Cosmatos' yeah. dad. Directed Leviathan. Oh, I, that's right. I knew that. Too. I forgot. We talked about that yeah. when we uh, did the Mandy episode. I had to. Yeah. I was like, I think that's right, but I couldn't think of his that's name. That's right. Yeah. And by Mandy episode, it's an episode that may never see the light of day. It's part of our quarantine series that. Yeah, that may or may never. Yeah. That'd be, be a be Christmas revealed. special, yeah. spectacular. Yeah. We'll see. But yeah, Mandy was a great movie. Highly recommended. Hells yeah. But, but what was the one? What was the other one? You know, other one? What? Mason, oh, Justin Jones. Yeah, do you remember him? Uh uh-uh. uh You don't remember him? Uh uh-uh. uh He was like a ginger. No. Is that offensive? At school? Are you? Yeah. Are you allowed to say that anymore? I don't, I don't know. know. You can't say anything anymore. <laughs> just fucking roll with it. <laughs> you just gotta own it. You just gotta say it and yeah. own it. Yeah. And if anyone calls you out, you're like, "Fuck you." That's what Lemmy did. When yeah. He wore them short shorts. Yeah. I have a pair of short shorts. I like, get just comfortable. Shut yeah, up. I'm going to start wearing. Oh, you know what? I'm going to cut my jeans right now. Yeah. Give me a pair of scissors, Pat. Yeah. Just cut. Yeah. Just go I'm cut. I'm going to cut it short enough that my balls hang out. Oh my god. What? I anyway, might as well just take them off. Let's go back okay. to this imposter that you know. <laughs> yeah, it was weird because his name was Justin Jones. I, how you knew him before me? Yes. Well, how you, I've known you since you were like eight. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know you right away because remember when I started, I started in Cecilton Elementary and oh. Janine was in Bow Manor, so there was that yeah. year and change where I did not know you. Okay, yeah, because I think well, no, and he was I definitely I may, wasn't eight. Or yeah, because no, you weren't because you were probably because I was thirteen, I think, when I met. Yeah, I was friends with her. So we moved down so you must to here like when I was 11. eleven or so. Yep. Okay. And uh, Justin Jones. Yeah, I do his not name remember is Justin him. Jones. I bet you some of our other friends would remember him. Hmm. But anyway, we don't have any I always thought that was odd because I, I knew this other Justin Jones. His name was legitimately Justin Jones. So when I was in school taking, you know, in computer class, they were talking about how you can look up people's records and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, that it's all public record. And I forget what, what the what the thing was, but... Google. No, it was, I, I don't remember what the topic was. <laughs> why we're saying, you could look up basically all everyone's records. Mm. Well, there's another Safari. Justin Jones in the area whose birthday is almost identical to mine, mm. who has like a rap sheet. Like, oh, my Ooh, The length God. of my heart. Like Ooh. his, it's like the same month, but like he's like 10 years before me. Yeah. Or something. Oh, so or after me. Year. No, he's, he's younger than me. Younger. So, But it's like close enough where if someone just... Glance glance at at it, like, yeah, oh, whoa, so you, like I get pulled over. Yeah, like, oh, you guess better what? change your tail lights. You got warrants. Yeah. 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 Jeez. So that shit. That would be bad. 
All right, let's rate this thing. Actually, hold on. We're not going to rate it? I'm just reading here. In the dawn of the 70s, American blockbusters, European production companies emerged stateside, attempting to recreate box office gold by cloning Hollywood. The infamous yeah, Supreme yeah. Court band Jaws copy Great White, yep. The Exorcist-esque Beyond the Door, yep. and countless others were packaged for export in the burgeoning drive-in circuit. Producer Ovidio yep. G. Asinitas. Yeah, I have Beyond the Door. And director, professional bodybuilder Michael J. Paradise. Professional the bodybuilder? Visitor. I think Great White was on Amazon Prime recently, too. It might still be on there. Hmm. The Visitor Stands is perhaps the most ambitious of all, taking its inspiration by artfully fusing The Omen, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, The Birds, Rosemary, hmm? Mo Rosemary's Baby, The hmm? Fury, and... Star Wars, along a baffling cast that includes Shelley Winters, Glenn Ford, Lance Henriksen, Franco Nero, and Sam Peckinpah from Draft House Films. Interesting. That was cool. Anyway. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Arrow put out Beyond the Door. It's a nice, like, thick... Oh, thick really? case, you know. What did it represent in the very beginning when the girl Katie was covered in mashed potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> was he like having a vision of her? I was thinking it was like yeah I think it was like a weird vision of of maybe that was a Covered more close in encounters in reference in there in mashed potatoes. like he saw a vision in my like remember he I thought it was like snow I don't know yeah oh there's the bird yeah but it, did, it was kind of weird it's like yeah. this is exactly what she looks like I'm guessing if she was covered in mashed potatoes <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right that was weird it's right, like if she was covered in Sprite and uh and Insulation. Ins Why can't I say that word? Insulation? Insulation? Yeah, it didn't sound right in my head. It didn't sound right to us either. <laughs> 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 we had to jump in and save you on that one. All right, uh, let's rate this. Mike, you go first. Oh, what do you give me? It? Unless you want to defer it to Justin, you get one deference. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new rule I just made oh, up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We're playing as, as we go. Yep. Uh, God, because this movie is not... I can't... I can't say that it, like, I... I can't rank this one very high. But at the same time, can you really rank it that low, Michael? <sighs> God damn. This is... That's why I didn't want to go first. <laughs> uh... I do think it's funny that Lance Hendrickson referred to this movie as a turkey. A turkey. When there's a, well, definitely a bird theme going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a goose. This movie is a it's goose. It's a goose. It's an Italian hawk. Uh, I gotta give it, like, a... 4.5. Wow, really? Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. I don't like it. It's not a <laughs> like <laughs> I like his big argument. I don't <laughs> like I like that I do like that you're straight right to the point. I just don't <laughs> I don't like it. But it's it it it's, would you say 4.5? Yeah, it's intriguing to me. <laughs> but it's a mess. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> that was great. Uh, and, I don't know and, why. and I've seen a lot of like the Italian. I guess definitely not for everyone. And it's not. That might be your lowest score. Mm, is it? Or was uh, that other movie? Oh, yeah. Girl on the Third Floor had a four. Yeah. See? There you go. A 4.5. So and you this put is your this second, up... second lowest score. Yeah. 1031. But then again, 1031. That was your own pick, wasn't it? Yeah. That was a ten or a four point seven. Yeah. So yeah. it's still in the ballpark with something he picked himself. Okay. Well, no. I... Look, I see a lot of movies, so it's hard for me to it's, something like this would not be up there in my in my repertoire of films that I enjoy. I don't dislike it. I think you need to buy the Blu-ray. Is I it, think you need to watch the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I really do think you. I really do think it was one of those movies. If you watch the trailer, it would already like prepare you for the absurdity. That all right. Well, somebody else score it then. God damn it! You want to go next, or you want me to go? Uh, I'll give it four point six. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I was no, <laughs> dude. I was going to say you gave me all that shit. Th no, this is I. This is one of my favorite movies. I think mm -hmm. so. I have to put it high. Really? Yeah. I love it. It's just everything I like. Listen, wow. but sometimes though, Mike, and we've talked about this, I can I can see where Justin's coming from. Sometimes it's it's art. And sure. And sometimes films hit somebody at the right moment in their life. Oh, sure. And it just it sticks with them and they it makes them it puts them in a good space. Yeah. 
and who who are we to say? That's true. You know, I mean, that's what you know. When I watch brain donors, I feel good, but it's not something I brag about. Yeah, <laughs> I have not seen that movie in a very long time. Yeah, me either. I want to watch it again. Though. That's a good movie. Yeah, I, is it though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is one of my favorite. It's definitely like one I could watch over and over again. Mm-hmm. Well, I do need to watch it again. Well, if you know, I mean, like I said, it's uh, and that's actually part of the reason I picked it too, yeah. is because I like I feel like a lot of times we watch stuff, and we and like I'm always like, yeah, this is gonna be the one where. Well, actually, like um, it the, was definitely the boy definitely was a surprise. I thought you would like that more than you did. Yeah, I don't like that movie. <laughs> but um, wait, what did I give that movie? The Void got a five. Huh? I gave it a five. Yeah, I think that's a more competent film. Not to more say that, competent than the visitor. Not to say that this is. I feel kind of differently. Well, good. Well, let's give somebody give a score then. <laughs> just, just fucking throw a number out so I go to bed. Jesus Christ! <laughs> There's like ten fucking numbers, and then you pick another number behind dot, and then another number. <laughs> All right. Spit it the fuck Here it out. Comes. All right, it's coming. It's relax. Here it is. Jeez. All right. Whew. Boy. You guys are, are you still with us, audience? No. Nope. You guys still They're there? Long gone. All right. I give it a 9.2. Wow. Really? Yep. That's your highest. That's got to be your highest. I think I've done higher. I don't, I don't think, I don't you, think have. you have. Shit. All right. 9.2. I stick to it. Let me wow. see. All right. Hey. 8. Point you like what you like. 8.7 is your highest. What was that? 8.7 was VFW. Ah. <clears throat> We have a new record. Yeah, The Visitor, 9.2. I don't think anything has exceeded 9.2. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Well, you know, my numbers are arbitrary. So am I. I'm very curious. So am about me, though. Hit me with it, Pat. This film, no. Okay. I will say this. If I were locked in a room for weeks with no food or water... And someone brought this movie in there and just told me to watch. Well, I had water. All right. Just no food. Mm-hmm. And Would some, you have to eat the movie? I don't understand no. what's happening here. <laughs> somebody, brought, somebody brought this. Okay. If the I was. Through celluloid. If I was in an environment. Let me rephrase. If I was in an environment where I had no connection to the outside. So you're like deprived of the no, outside. No outside world. influence. No. I couldn't get any. No internet. I couldn't get any questions answered. Mm-hmm. And I watched this film in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. I would probably it probably would have driven me to madness. <laughs> 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 but what I will say is this: what happened was I keep going back to this. When I got a little context into the yeah. bigger picture, the the Italian cinema era of the day, yeah. the the story. The story that they lay out, the good versus evil, where they were pulling their elements of inspiration, quote unquote, theft, whatever you want to call it, from other, you know, elements of films, whatever. Uh, maybe theft is harsh, but you know what my point is. They, they took elements. That's homage. Fair. You can call it theft. But w- what I'm getting at is once I started to see the bigger picture with these outside influences explaining to me how we got here, mm. I started appreciating the film a little more. Are you with me? Oh, I d- yeah, I did too. So I definitely agree with that. I think I'm still kind of like I'm good. I'm definitely going higher than uh, yeah. I'm not going anywhere near either one of you guys. So I'm going to be more in the middle there. So I'll give it. I'll give it a solid six. Okay. I'll give it a six. That's cool. I like that. This is one where we're a little all over the place. Yeah, I feel yeah. like we're usually kind of bunched up. In a lot of times we are. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Cl- pretty close. So listen, I did. I enjoyed this movie, but like I said, I really started to gain an appreciation for it when I started learning the stories, you know, learning who did the music. Yeah. Then I had like even more of an appreciation of his impact on, on pop culture. And when I started to learn more about where they drew their elements from and, you know, what they were up against. I, I heard, too, that there were, uh, again, we seem to say this every week, that there were studio issues with cuts and, and whatnot. I heard that was something they had to battle with, at least to a, to some extent. Oh, yeah, I think I recall um, something like that, too. I don't know how that impacted the story, Yeah, yeah. but still, all these little elements and nuggets. I'm going to guess it didn't. 
I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just going to go out on a whim. I think out of all the, uh, I mean, you out know. Of, yeah, out of all the studio intervention where you watch a movie and it's like, oh, this doesn't make sense. And you see the deleted scenes, it's like, oh, I don't think you're going to find any deleted scenes that are going to make it tie, make it wrap, yeah, wrap it all. Because I think the story is all there. It's just you got to. You got to piece it together. You got to piece it together and dig a little deeper and, and like. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and, and I'm but, not saying, it, like, my score is low, but I'm not saying it's a bad movie. So here, here, okay, for me, I kind of. If you want to, no, it's not. I and it was an interesting film, and it gave us a lot to talk about. Yeah. So here, so here that in itself is worth it. Here's one final point that I just want to get on the record. When I watch a film, sometimes, sometimes I watch that film, and I, I specifically want to watch it as a viewer. I want to watch it as a moviegoer. Mm-hmm. I want mm. to just be drawn into this world and see it without trying to like you know break the. Uh, you know, like I don't want to know how the magic is done. Yeah, I just yeah. want to. I want to get the feels. I want to see it for the way the filmmaker wanted me to see it and feel it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to just get hit with all the moments. But other times, I can't watch a movie like that. Other times, I watch a movie much like this one, and I can't watch it for the feels and for the moments because there's just too many questions and I'm oh, confused. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I start trying to break it down and when i start that breakdown i start looking behind the curtain figuring out why things were done the way they were done now typically i would rate a movie if it forces me into that zone where i feel like i have to break it down so i can generally understand it that's typically a negative Uh but in this case the more i started to investigate and peek behind the curtain the more i gained an appreciation for it so i just wanted to put on the record that my six is based on the score could be much lower if I strictly rated this on viewer enjoyment. But instead, this movie pushed me into trying to break the code and figure out how the, you know, how the sausage is made. <clears throat> and because of that, I gained an appreciation. Thus, my score is a little higher. I hope that makes sense. No, it makes, it makes perfect okay. sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's a six, which, again, would probably be lower if I just rated this in a, you know, yeah. a totally neutral world, mm. which clearly we don't live in but i think it, anyway there there's uh what was that old commercial there's no wrong way to eat a something there's no wrong way to eat reese's. reese's yeah it's uh, kind of like yeah. yeah it's like there's sponsored by reese's yeah no. <laughs> we got another one um, or we're gonna get sued by them either way uh, well, gonna go one or two ways uh, they'll probably burn our houses down <laughs> um I, I like it like different like sometimes and i think that's why rotten tomatoes and stuff has like the 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 um it's critics review and mm-hmm. sometimes you want to look so, th- something through a critical lens sometimes you just want to sit there and just watch something and check out mm-hmm. sometimes just you know it depends on what you want and how you do it but that's yeah. just, I like it because it's like I feel distance enough from it where like sometimes when stuff's a little too real and stuff I get too like into it and too mm-hmm. anxious mm-hmm. you know whereas is I can relax and just watch it and all the crazy stuff can happen but it's not just like too far yeah. removed you know it's not yeah because movies are supposed to bring you out of real world yeah you know grief and and ang- angst and anxiety mm. and sometimes uh movies have a tendency of yeah you're just trading one frustration for another yeah <laughs> so sometimes it is good to go into a world where it's like ah, oh, it's just kind of like you know just a safe goofy it's, world. yeah it's uh, a safe goofy i, I definitely world. enjoyed the ride but mm-hmm. i can't like there were definite moments that were super highlights and we've talked we mm-hmm. you know we've went we've gone through the key scenes that we were all like zoned in on mm-hmm. um yeah for for sure those things stand out and everything there are definite moments in this movie that are pretty pretty great and, pr- and there's you know crazy things <laughs> but like from like a filmmaking standpoint even there's moments that are like very 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 well done like mm-hmm. the car crash scene yeah. which is very uh, well- that motorcycle stunt yeah dude. And, and you know th- that's one of the best like it's practical good. legitimate motorcycle stunts i think i've ever seen it's good. Yeah, it stands out. I, I but, can't think of any off the top of my head, but you know, and and again, we've talked about you know, uh, you and I certainly have seen a lot of Italian, yeah, especially genre films. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have to say though, though in the in the pantheon of Italian genre films, this this, and again, as I usually do with my rating system, I kind of try to keep it. I kind of compare it to others mm-hmm. of its ilk, mm-hmm. and and this one is just not as good to me mm. and that's okay and it's not bad yeah 
It's not unwatchable. It's definitely... And and like you said, once you have the context, that's a ringing endorsement. It's not unwatchable. It's not unwatchable. <laughs> once you once you have the context, five stars of like five what, stars. what's going on. Uh, but that, that was huge for it me. It does. It does help quite a bit. Yeah. Um. So. The one thing I didn't mention, which one thing I like about it too, is because I feel like a lot of the most of the Italian horror movies and all that kind of stuff I liked were from like the seventies and all. Like, sure. You know, and uh, but I feel like this is kind of like it's one big exclamation point at the end of an era, almost. Sure, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, I could see that. Like yeah. it's toward. I feel like it was towards the end where I was frizzling on that. I was like, all right, time to go. Time to like empty all the craziness we have in the tank and just yeah. like go for broke. It almost kind of feels like. Mm -hmm. I would say of of those, uh, Ovidio, Asenitis guy uh, yeah. of his, the ones we were mentioning like uh, Shark. Which Great I ha that I have not seen, I so I really can't speak on that one. But Beyond the Door, which I have seen, uh, Piranha Two, The Spawning, and and this one, The mm -hmm. Visitor, it's probably the most yeah, like that like that review said, it's the most ambitious. Mm -hmm. Like it, it definitely has the most going for it. It went for it. Yeah, it swung for the fences. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It seemed like he really well, he was the producer, he wasn't the director, but it mm. seemed like this one had a lot more effort Where's put into it. Where's the money come from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one seemed like it had a lot more effort put into it. Yeah. All right. Any final thoughts? No, I'm good. I think I got it all out. All right, Justin, you get it all out? He's, he's consulting I, his notes. I can't get over the the beautiful ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is that an is, awesome. That story. is a time uh, a tale for the ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I think I'm good. All right. All right. I just wrote down the house. What's that mean? It doesn't matter. The house. The house. Cool. Nice. Oh, the nice house. house. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah I already right, said go. that. Jesus Christ. Fuck yeah. off. That's uh, why I didn't bring it up because you said it so well. I don't want to have yeah. to compete with that. House. So a couple notes I didn't touch on. Housekeeper smacking Katie. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. And then how acknowledge is spelled incorrectly at the very beginning when they're <laughs> thanking the Georgia governor and Atlanta mayor for. Uh, yeah. Are being so. Uh, there's, there's oh, and who said? Was it the Space Jesus that said uh, wounded him fatally in the brain? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good line. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, to the side, I forgot. Yeah, wounded him fatally in the brain. Yeah, yeah that was uh, Space uh, Jesus. Franco Nero. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, for tuning in to the MacGuffin Guild. We really appreciate you uh, hanging around and checking us out and being a part of this. You are a part of the guild, whether you want to or not. <laughs> That's that's mildly threatening. <laughs> well, I think if you're listening to this and you're hearing this right now, it means you're listening to this entire thing. So yeah, so thank you. And uh, again, I'm Pat Doherty. I'm with Justin Jones and Mike Antonio. Thank you guys as always. Thank you. And uh, we will see you next week. Have a good one. See you. Goodbye. Later. What did it represent in the very beginning when the girl Katie was covered in mashed potatoes? <laughs> 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 <laughs>